Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash roosterteeth. Hey, like that. Hey, <laughs> Welcome to the Rooster podcast. Teeth Podcast, episode number 209. This week... Gus, Gavin, Barbara, Jack, and Bernie. Yay! Hey, wave. how y'all doing? Nice. We almost did the Mexican wave. Did you know that this is the original cast? <laughs> wait, 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 the, the Mexican wave? That's yeah. what they call the wave in the UK, From the, the Mexican wave. From the first video uh, live stream podcast. Reason. Oh, really? This is the same cast. God, and we went back to it, and Jesus I did not Christ. learn my lesson. You did not learn sorry, your lesson. Sorry, internet. So, um, South by Southwest is going on in Austin, so it's been a, a hectic week for everyone. Yay. Yep. We just wrapped up the uh, the Games Festival this past weekend. Yep. Yay. So, uh, uh, while I was there, you know, we, we spent time... Uh, going, sitting in the booth and signing autographs and talking to people. While I was there at one point on Saturday, this kid, who the fuck did not silence their phone? <laughs> Look at it his face. Was Bernie. <laughs> this one kid came up to me on Saturday <laughs> and uh, was like, hey, uh, you took a picture with my brother last year. Oh, God. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. Then he, like, he pulls up the picture and shows me. He's like, do you remember this? I was like, no, sorry, man, I don't. And he goes, you bastard. <laughs> I was like, how old was this kid? He must have been like 16. Gus, he was like, nagging you. And I was like, really? He goes, no, oh, yeah, whatever. And then he asked for my autograph, and I was like, no, 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 I'm a bastard. <laughs> Did you sign you, it, Boston? Yeah, I wrote, Gus, <laughs> you know, yeah, bastard. Star, and uh, then he walked off. And then like 10 minutes later, he came back with his little brother who was in the picture, and he came back with his mom. So I said, did you know your son just called me a bastard like 10 Did minutes you, ago? Did you ratted the kid out? <laughs> yeah. oh, his wow. Mom. And she was like, what? And her head like whipped around to him. And he was like, yeah, I didn't remember taking a picture with his little brother last year. So he called me a bastard. Oh, and no. she looked like she wanted to murder him. Oh, and he was no. like, no, no, I was kidding. I was kidding. I was like, I'm a bastard. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> wow. She was like That's cried. Amazing. Like pulled, <laughs> pulled the tears. You know, I have to say that like that is a question that people will often ask you at a convention. Like Comic-Con is not our booth, but overall is like 135,000 people that go to Comic-Con. Yeah. And someone will walk up and they will say, hey, we talked to Comic-Con three years ago. Do you remember me? It's like, there's no, to me, it's like there's no upside to that question. It's just yeah. like, you know, it's just like, I don't know why people ask that. It's like, I, so I, did you say yes always, you know, that we saw probably a thousand people that year, but yes, I remember, you know, th three years ago. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I, I brought don't, the DVD for you to sign. No, no, I know. Right. I'm saying this. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Yeah. The, I don't understand what they're asking is what I'm saying. Like, what's the motivation of it? You know what I, I mean? I don't know why it's, I remember really obvious stuff as well. Like I saw a picture once of me with a dude dressed like a giant hot dog. You would think I'd remember that. I have no memory. You were probably whatsoever. drunk. I was. Sounds like I you were drunk. in Saints Row. <laughs> <laughs> also, you see so many people in costume throughout a convention that. Yeah, it's but like, you don't see a hot dog costume often. If you took a picture with Batman, you're like, I don't know, maybe it could have been a few guys. A hot dog? Probably not as many. I think yeah. I was leaning my arm up on his bread roll and I had my hand around his sausage. Like <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> what wedged in between the bread roll and the sausage? Yeah. Well, I go the opposite way. I always assume when I see someone that I haven't seen in a while that they don't remember me. Like, we, we, we go to parties for South by Southwest, and we run into other people who do what we do. They're not from Austin, but they come to visit Austin. Also, a lot of times you might know somebody, but you know them in a context. Mm -hmm. And so when you see them outside that context, so, you know, yeah. you don't recognize them yeah, right away. Right. So a lot of times I just, like, when I haven't seen somebody in, like, two years, I'll walk up and say, oh, hey, so-and-so, you know, hey, man, Bernie from Rooster Teeth. And they go, yep, you know, I know who you are. Yeah. Well, that's probably the polite, don't, but they're probably like, yeah. okay, yeah. That's yeah. the polite God. thing to do, though. It is the polite yeah. thing to do. I yeah. reintroduce that's myself I constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I just assume that people have busy lives and, you every, know. Every day when I get home from work, I walk in, I'm like, good to see you, Esther. I'm Gus. <laughs> I'll be your husband. I know. Hi, Benjamin. <laughs> Judging by the spreadsheet, we'll have sexual intercourse tonight. I think There's it's a 74% chance. It's more to assume people remember you than to not reintroduce yourself. No. Like, I think it's worse to be like, oh, you obviously remember me, rather than to be like, oh, you already introduced yourself to me. I don't think that's as bad. You don't think it's as bad to do what? I'm sorry, I'm not <laughs> yeah, you, you lost me a little bit in, in the case. To reintroduce here. yourself. I think that's better than assuming they remember you. Oh, yeah, yeah that's of what we're saying. Of course it is. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. what we just said, though? <laughs> no, I'm just yeah. reaffirming that. You did it in, like, the most roundabout way. You could have yeah. said, I agree. Jack, you want to go for it as well, just to get a third <laughs> <of it? laughs> if, I mean... If you haven't seen someone in a long time, it's better if you introduce yourself as you see them again. Like, hey, I, you know, I was here a couple of years ago. It was good to see you again. Oh, like, you know, just assume they don't remember who you are. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. way I, I, I actually got lost in that. <laughs> I didn't know whether it was good really or whether did, it wasn't. You really did <laughs> remake the point again. Every time, do you want to make the point? Let's stop. <laughs> <That's not> <laughs> for the love of God, just <laughs> stop. <laughs> but the, part, the parties have been fun. It's been, it's been kind of crazy. I will say this. Austin, 
I love this town. I really do. There's nothing about this town that I don't like. And I realize I'm going to make this statement while wearing a checkered shirt and a sock tie and, you know, black frame glasses. But what has happened to Austin since the beginning of South by Southwest this year where the fucking hipster quotient has just, like, the needle's pegged it's now. It's the same as always. Is it always no, like yeah. this no, bad? It's definitely, it's definitely worse Something's than Something's gotten amped it's, up. Well, it's one of those well, things. Well, Jordan where, moved here. <laughs> Jordan, yeah, it's, it's a viral here. marketing campaign for Ray-Ban. <laughs> No, it's one of those things where, like, I think Austin's kind of been known as the hipster area. So we're getting people from out of town that think, like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go full-blown hipster. So we're getting, we're, we're getting import hipsters? Yeah, we're getting import, like, uh, guys who are trying out to be, like, the hipster. You know, like, when, when, like, people go to Vegas, they kind of, like, get a little crazier than usual. Maybe it's the same idea, except they're a little more hipster than usual. It's I been off the charts. They both yeah, said they're inner hipster. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like East Austin just threw up on the rest of Austin <laughs> is what it feels like. like. I got my capri jeans I need to wear. I don't like it now because people don't believe me that I'm from here. Like, oh, where'd you come from? If stuff was stuff, I said, no, I live here now. I've, I've lived here for a year. And I'm like, bollocks. I don't believe me. Bollocks? Bollocks? Is that really what they <laughs> people say? People, yeah. say. people from LA say bollocks. May have bollocks. slightly translated that. That's <laughs> the dog's balls. It's a weird entitlement you feel, though, being at South by Southwest and someone being like, where are you from? It's like, oh, I live in Austin. I don't know. It's like some weird. Is that a weird entitlement you feel? Yeah. On top of all your Twitter followers? Oh, stop it. Don't go back to that. Here joke. we go. Bring it on. Bring it on. Let's fight. Okay. Could people I specifically that told you something. <laughs> Gus, no, no. The joke's that's not fair. I specifically told you something you know I wasn't going to bring up on the podcast today because it would cause endless shit in your Twitter feed. And I didn't bring it up. And then you bring up that to Barbara. That's rude. You're yeah, terrible. You I think it's less rude to reintroduce yourself to someone <laughs> <laughs> than to assume they He's know just, you. I'm just reintroducing a joke that meant another joke. <laughs> Back before they just didn't everyone laughed, they knew each other. So what was Gus's? <laughs> oh, uh, no, shut up! Yeah, yeah look at <laughs> this is so much. Now I'll I text it to you. I'm gonna give you ammunition. I'll text it to you, Barbara, across here. So okay. So yeah. So we 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 went to some parties this weekend. We held like, a party. We held a party this weekend, and uh, I don't know if I want to say because it, it wasn't really a public party. So I was just saying we went to a party. Anyway, it really so was. we're at a party. It doesn't matter. Well, I guess it's over it's now. It's less rude to talk about the party in the past tense in the future. Yeah, we were douchey until you said that. Now you made us douchey in the middle of your explanation. But we were sitting there. Like I had had a few drinks where I was standing there drinking and stuff, and this guy walked past and I was like. Man, who, like, and then people were taking photos with them. I looked over, I'm like, that guy looks awful. That's Scumbag Steve. Like, what the hell is Scumbag Steve doing at our party? And My then, question is, how does he get in? Because we had a private Yeah, Scumbag list. Steve's crashed our party. It's like. <laughs> he did. Yeah, you like, can do that. That's the whole point. Who's of Scumbag, scumbag Steve? Steve? He's, the, he's a meme. That, he's a human meme. It's right on screen. There right you now. go. Oh, there he is. There's there's oh, there at our party. Our party. That's Scumbag Steve at our party. Oh, that's Chris. Who the fuck's running that camera? <laughs> I don't know, but it was really dark at the party, and uh, so and doing that, that light would pop up and drive us crazy. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. Okay, I was not sober. Are my eyes open there? <laughs> Jesus. That is Jack. Yeah, Esther looks really weird now. Just okay. <laughs> uh, Jack, did you reintroduce yourself to Scumbag Steve after you? What's funny is it looks like his hat's photoshopped on there. <laughs> 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 but it, it, I mean, it's kind of funny to see him. Like he's actually sort of taken, you know, he's he's living the meme now. He's kind of embraced it. Living so. the meme. <laughs> that should be a shirt. That should be a shirt. <laughs> But he, then, so, he's a nice dude. Isn't he, he, isn't he the good guy Greg as well? Because his real name is Greg, right? I think so. No, his real name is Blake, I think. Blake, oh. yeah. That's okay. like, it's like Boston Blake, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, or Blake, but, Blake Boston. Boston. But, um, but like, it was funny. So he walked past me, and then I was like, oh, my God. And this guy's like, oh, yeah, he's with me. Like, and then, you, you want to meet him? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then... Um, Do you want to meet him? Like, <laughs> you have to go through this guy. Well, I don't know if it was his manager or something. It could have been. But he's like, there oh, yeah. There is no way a meme has a manager. I just, there is a guy who was there at the party whose job was to manage memes. No And, like, manage way. people who I, were in memes. I think this might have been the guy talking. Because yeah, he's, like, he's like, oh, you want to meet the guy who did Nyan Cat? And I was like... Sure, okay. And he's like, hi, you know, I'm Tim or whatever his name was. Like, I, I invented, or I made Nyan Cat. I was like, oh, cool. You but, know what? <laughs> like, I feel like you, job, don't, I love that song. you don't ever need to meet these people, though. Well, I agree with you. And it's like, Jack, with all due respect, in the past, we've talked about things that you get like, there's, not, there's nothing that's too much for you that's yeah, like yeah. too on the nose. This to me is an example of that. Like you get really excited about seeing Scumbag Steve in person. It was more of just like a. Like, I got kind what? of excited about yeah, it. Yeah, it was kind of I'll admit it. Okay, okay, okay. I got excited it. when I met the Double Rainbow guy. <laughs> Did you really? But, okay. So something else, I don't know if you know that. Maybe I'll talk to you about this. But I get excited to be Antoine, the, the rapist. Antoine lady. Dotson? Yeah, the nice. park guy. But, uh, so funny. I was talking to my friend, and she looked over, and she saw like a guy with a mohawk. And she's like, that looks like the guy from the Curiosity video. Like, okay. The, the Mars Curiosity thing. Oh. And I was like, oh, I was like, okay. NASA, the guy from NASA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The JPL, JPL guy. Yeah. yeah, and so she, like, she walked over, and she's like, she goes, you look a lot like the guy from the Curiosity team. And he goes, yeah, that's me. And it was, it was supposedly it was actually him. Like, in, I, there's no he way I can hear it. I, I talked was to him. At our party. I talked to him. I talked to him, and I asked him if he wanted to come on the podcast, and he's down with it. 
There so, you go. Or is he? Wait, so he's not here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, so that, like, that was weird. Actually, I got introduced flying. to him. The guy. This is the guy who, when they were landing the latest round of rovers on Mars, he had a mohawk with like stars in it too. Yeah, yeah. It's some some goofy thing. Anyway, he became he became really well known on the JPL team. Um, and I I mean I like that because it's he's a guy who's like making an effort and. You know, speaking of people making an effort and looking cool, Monty at the party looked like a fucking... Awesome. He looked like a badass. <laughs> he was he, great, but he spent the entire party trying to unbutton my shirt. At I, every available opportunity. No, he has a boner part. for you, and he's really trying right now. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, really but no, so, the, so I got introduced to the guy from the JPL team, and it's like I'm being introduced to him among, like, the, the, the scumbag Steve guy and, like, the other meme people. It's like, I just it didn't seem like... I mean, he's like, this is the guy, he's the guy who fucking landed a ship on Mars. Yeah, I mean, That's yeah. like a different, you know... So it's like amazing. this guy, this guy popped up everywhere now. But it was like it was just weird. Like wow, what? Like what is this guy doing at our party? How did he end up here? Here's an interview of him so, with uh, Sheila Lazar. Sheer yeah. Lazar. Yeah. So it was pretty crazy. It was like wow, that's. that's I did crazy. I did not even see that guy. Really? Yeah. Although what? I was pretty drunk, so <laughs> yeah. it's uh, it's not too. So the, so we should, also, was, can we also point out the fact now, just before anyone else points it out, that all the parties. That we make fun of, we used to make fun of on the podcast, and we actually hate, not only go to these fucking parties, but we actually hold we these become everything we hate. And we, yes, we have lived long enough to become we hate. We know that. So we're comfortable we, with that. We had a party in this one at this venue that was like at the top of a building, and to get there, you had to walk up this giant flight of stairs. It, it was ridiculous. It was like a straight shot all the way oh. up there. We're all, I'm, I'm out. I'm totally out of shape. I walked up there. I was like panting by the it time I got to the top. It was four flights of stairs. Imagine like you're walking up four flights of stairs, but you walk it up a straight line. Like you see what you're gonna. It's like a Mayan temple. Yeah. Is what it looked like. What you're going There's up. There's some footage. And, yeah, and then of smart. course, once you get to the top, you get drunk, and then when you go to go down, <laughs> it's like the whole thing's spinning. Gavin, you're not focusing on anything. Gavin. Every time I saw Gavin. Gavin's a couple shots in at this point. We're showing a video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this will be linked in the linked up. Uh, we're showing a video <laughs> from the from the. Uh, That's Monty. There's, there's, there's Monty, Monty with his crazy red hair. Every this time we'll put in the link up, guys. Every time I saw Gavin at the party, I made it a point to put uh, a Jack and Coke in his hand. So really? you're the reason why yesterday was one of the worst days <laughs> yeah. of my life. Every time I saw him, I was like, "Hey, let's get you a drink." Why is it the worst? Hangover. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Man, I always say that, that they they start doing shots and stuff, uh, and I I, I always say was for a second. if there's ever a night where I don't remember what happened in the night, the last thing I remember is taking a shot. Always, that's a hundred percent. And I'm like, I so just like just looking at the ceiling. Did I you do a shot that night? No, I didn't. When was the last time I remember? I was at that party at Gus's house when yeah, you, you got yeah. gone. Okay. You got have you, gone. Have you, have you been? Have you hit that level again since then? That was tequila night. Uh, but we might. Uh, uh, luckily, like when we went down to Australia. I had Brandon there as a decoy, and people would hand me shots, and I'd go, I'd go, hey, thanks, Brandon, drink this. And I had him, <laughs> and that's when Brandon sent me that tweet that made no fucking sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> I had it saved in my phone forever. It was just like total nonsense, and it, like, I was worried that he was dead <laughs> right after he sent the tweet. So, uh, so how do you feel about making a video go ahead. called An Interview with the Fulcrum, where... <laughs> You just no, no, don't, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. I have an idea for a, a thing for a thing that I, I want to talk to you about. I think I've already <laughs> talked to you about this. I think did we just be, come up with the same idea? I think I think you're I think you might be feeding back to me something that I said to you. Are you talking like drunk history? No, nope, like, not at all. I'm gonna stop talking about it. He said stop. It's a video I want to talk. Well, I'm no, it's a video something that already exists. So. Now yeah. I'm intrigued. That's the whole thing about like <laughs> yeah. something already exists on the internet. Like you think of something that already exists. But somewhere. Gavin and I, Gavin and I left the. Uh, after our party, we, we got invited to the. We actually should showed her on screen. Sheer Lazar, who runs What's Trending, they had like a they had a party right around the corner from us, and so we went over to that thing. I don't know what they did to promote that party, but they did it completely wrong, because there was like an entire block of Fifth Street that was the line for that party, and was we there were, like a special guest there or something? Dude, this is what I don't understand about these things. People will wait in a line around a block for what essentially amounts to $30 of free drinks. You know, it's basically, was, it's South by Southwest. Yeah. So at night, all day long, people go to panels. I guess that's what they do. And then at night, they go to these parties. And it's like, if they can find one that's an open bar or whatever, then the people just go ape shit for it. But I mean, really, I mean, what's the, the I mean, 30 bucks of free drinks is what you're really hoping for. And they're in line for like three goddamn hours waiting to go into this party. But because um, uh, I was on Sheer Lazar shows today, uh, show today, Barbara, you're going on Wednesday. Yeah. And Jack, you're going on Thursday. Thursday, he's got some cool guests that he's interviewing. I'm, I was, try, I'm trying to figure out if I can talk about him if they've been announced. I'll we'll talk about it in a second, but okay. yeah, let me finish this story. But so we got so we got on this list to get in, and luckily the producer of the show was in the doorway when we showed up. Otherwise, Gavin and I would have just walked away. 
And they were like, oh, the guy's name is Damien. He said, come on, come on in, come in. And so we go in and we duck under the rope and go in. And the people around us, it was like, who had somebody describe it? It was like skipping the line for a lifeboat at the Titanic. People were fucking <laughs> yeah. like Well, you were already in when I arrived. Right, exactly. So we went through the same experience going in. Yeah, I was with a dude and there was a line like half a mile long going this way. And then we were trying to get in under the rope and all that. And then some woman came over and she was like, VIP line's this one. And there was like another line of like 50 people. And I'm just like, I don't really want to get in that badly at all. And then someone grabbed me, pulled me under the rope. And everyone's like swarming in because we're getting through. And I'm like squidging under. And then in the end, I actually got under the rope. And right at the last minute, as I ducked in the door, I went. But then you get then you get in and what? It's a fucking People were grabbing me and trying to like shove me back when someone was clearly trying to bring me in. Yeah. But then you get in and what is it at the end? I mean, at the end of the day, you're, I mean, you're in this. It's a it's bar. A, another, a, a different party. Uh, exactly, right, exactly the same. Exactly the fucking same as the last one. So I, I really don't understand the, the like the, the hubbub with. Ours had scumbag stuff. Steve, though. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. Curiosity Party Mohawk, dude. Well, and, that's where I actually met Curiosity Mohawk, dude, the other place. Oh, really? So, yeah. That's funny. So. I guess everybody was just making the rounds on it. It was only like a block, like a half a block away from our party. So, so I, after we left, after I left our party, uh, I was like walking down the street trying to figure out what to do, and I got a push alert from the South by Southwest app on my phone that was like thunderstorms headed to Austin by midnight. You know, take be sure to take cover. Oh, that was a like, good idea. Clear out, motherfucker. Why doesn't the fucking Weather Channel app send me alerts about thunderstorms? Why am I getting alerts from the fucking South by I'm Southwest sure app? A weather app you could download. I have like the Weather Channel app. Well, maybe it just. It's not set that way. I'm sure there's an app you could download that will. I'm sure there is, but I would think the Weather Channel app would have that functionality. Well, maybe they're fucking get on it, people. Get your shit together. (laughs) It's like it seems like that's core functionality that would be relevant. And I had no idea it was going to rain. So thank you, the South by Southwest app uh, creators. Hey Jack, there's a message for you over there. Hey. (laughs) Um, Sorry. So here, let me read this thing here. I want to remind everyone that this podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature and featuring audio versions of many New York Times bestsellers. For our listeners, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. One audiobook to consider is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash roosterteeth. That's audiblepodcast.com slash roosterteeth. I'm looking right at, I'm uh, mad dogging Jordan because... Right before the podcast, he told me that. Uh, <laughs> what is right before the podcast, George <laughs> told me that today was Douglas Adams' birthday, and that I should recommend a Douglas Adams book, but I didn't. I recommended The Hobbit. Oh, instead. get face, Aww. Jordan. So suck it, Jordan. Sick burn. <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure out if I can t- talk about who's on. So the we're going to be. Uh, some of us are going to be on the the Nerdist podcast this week on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we will be on the Nerdist podcast. People have been asking us to do that for a really long time, and so Nerdist podcast uh, this Wednesday. It'll be me and Gus and Joel, yes. right? You said that like Joel. Me, me and Gus, Gus and Joel. Joel. Um, and it's going to be live streamed, I believe. So people who want to watch. Is it? I'm going to be nervous. <laughs> if I said it like Joel, I'd be like, I would have been nervous when I said it. I would have said, I told you. I told you. <laughs> you were there and I said, we're going on the podcast. But uh, so D-Y-Y. for South by Southwest, it's going to dominate probably a lot of our conversation at the early part of the podcast here because everyone from all over comes to Austin for this festival <laughs> called South by Southwest, which it starts off with now a little gaming thing that they have, a small gaming festival. Slash interactive. And then there's an interactive festival, which is not the same thing because... The but inter- this whole week is interactive though, right? Yeah, and then, and, but also film has started too. They overlap. They all overlap. So, and then it's interactive and that overlaps with film, which then overlaps with music. It started with music initially back in the day, uh, the South by Southwest uh, music festival, and then they added film. And then years ago, they added interactive, and now they're trying to get some gaming stuff going. But uh, the crazy thing about that is the badges are super expensive. Like, if you want to go to all the festivals, the badge is a platinum badge. I think that's like 1800 bucks. Yeah. I think it's something like that. Yeah. And the crazy thing to me about it is that the interactive festival, which is like a bunch of panels uh, about like how to make it in web, social media, etc., that that's the most expensive single badge. Yeah, that's like, a thousand bucks for mm-hmm. that badge, and I think music is seven hundred and film is six hundred. That seems way out of whack to me. Does that seem crazy to you? No, it seems insane. <clears throat> well, yeah. I would, I would think you'd get the most benefit out of an interactive badge. Why? I don't know. I just feel like music and film is more for enjoyment purpose. Okay. And interactive is more of a learning and meeting people. So in the you industry. feel like you should pay more for education as opposed to entertainment. See, I think what Barbara is saying is that it's more of a business expense yes. to go to the interactive festival. So probably, someone could probably justify getting that from a company more easily than they True. justify film or 
music unless they're in that industry. Hmm. Well, we have a friend who has a, uh, a film in the film festival. We have uh, uh, Emily Higgins has her film. Or yes. employee. Yeah, Grow Up Tony Phillips. is. Uh, she's got a film that's there. It's her now, her, what, her, is that her fourth feature that she's made? I think it's her. I thought it was third. Third. Third feature? Yeah. Close yeah. Fourth. Actually, no, it's fourth. fourth. It's, it's fourth. her fourth, yeah. And she's the ripe old age of 20. She's got her fourth <laughs> film she makes in me South feel by so South. Gray was the uh, DP for that, right? Yeah, yep. So, yeah, so I'm going to go see it later this week. Um, we're going to yeah. do it like Thursday or something Thursday. like that, right? Um, we're going to see it. So, check it out. Um, and then what else? Do we know anybody else? Like, uh, did Nathan, uh, yeah, uh, Nathan's film I read got picked up. Kid Thing? Kid Thing, yeah. Oh. I was reading somewhere. I think it was like on his Facebook that he posted that. Uh, Nathan's not with us anymore. For those of you who don't know that, Nathan left the company, what, about four months yeah, He's ago? still alive. Yeah. <laughs> he's not with us anymore. Yeah. yeah, he's still alive. Someone look a, up Kid Thing and see what it was I have a cousin who actually has a film that's showing at South by Southwest. It's called Lunar Sea with like an exclamation point at the end. It looks really cool. No, that channel. means it's called Lunar Sea. <laughs> <laughs> Most excitement I've seen on a gut I've been feeling a little under the weather today. Yeah. Wait, the hand motion combined with the silence right after you did it was like. He perfect. just no, he held it. I liked it a lot. He held it like yeah. jazz hands. Fucking, you gotta yeah. you gotta stick with it. it's commitment. That's performance. Lunar scene. You gotta commit. Me, it's part me, of it. It's part of our improv me. training. Remember? It's true. Oh, you weren't it's here for that. Yes, and yes, and. So you're under the weather too. Like every, it seems like a, like a lot of people kind of been yeah. down. I think Dude, I it keeps cold. going this year. Yeah. Everyone keeps getting the flu again and again. I think I got a cold this time. Like yeah. I woke up with a sore throat and kind of a headache. And are you one of those people that bundles the flu with a cold? Sure. When you think it's the same. I thing. just other people being sick. Isn't it me. a form of the cold? A co- a f- the flu comes with a fever, and colds do not come with. Flu fever. is a thing that you can, you can die from the flu. Yeah. Only cold. if you're lame. <laughs> or if you lived in 1970. It would be really lame, wouldn't it? Yeah. Cause of death, flu. Oh. No, no. L- historically, you'd be with a lot of people. Yeah, but it's lame now. Yeah. I don't know. I guess so. Historically, yeah. getting killed by a cannonball, historically, you'd be with a lot of people, too. <laughs> it would still be lame today, though. Dude, Fuck. how many fucking people have really been killed by a cannonball? <laughs> a cannonball. Not that many people. Well, like, the kind sure. you do into the couple water, hundred? Or? I'm sure it's more than that. Well, I mean, so how do, well, in the well, history how, of time, oh, how do cannonballs kill people? Do they, they do they hit you or do they explode? Are there some that have like no, there's a shrapnel explosion? Like, it's a little column A, yeah. column B, I think. I, no, I, I think I don't think cannonballs I thought, explode. I thought cannonballs stay intact. I, but they I would think there's both stuff. kinds. Unless it's unless there's like a big fuse sticking out and you light it before you fire it. <laughs> like one of the flaming cannonballs yeah. that blows up like in a <laughs> in like a cartoon, like, like a bowling <laughs> like cartoon. You, like you can upgrade in Age of Empires. I love that they still put those on the signs at the fucking TSA at the airport. What for like bombs? Like someone's gonna carry a fucking bomb <laughs> with a wick <laughs> that's lit. It's just so stupid. Like what, what, Natasha what is that, sir? It's uh, my iPod case. I mean, what <laughs> is it? It's like, do we need like an international symbol? Like we clearly mean bomb. It's like, you're either carrying a bomb or um, you're not. It's like, oh, sh- oh, yeah, I got my bomb on me. Yeah, like, you see this, oh, like, big right. bulge in your pocket. I feel like it's so absurd that if I, was, if I were to walk through airport security with a black ball with a fuse flaming, they would just let me through. You know, they that, wouldn't actually think I would walk they, in with they, a bomb. They right. changed, the, the TSA started allowing, or they're going to start allowing pocket knives again on planes. Good, yeah. good. But you still have to take your shoes off to get on. Yeah. You still have to take your shoes off, and you still can't take water on. I do not yeah. have to take my shoes off. With pre-check, which is another thing you should do. Really? Yeah. Which I admit, I did pre-check. Um, uh, we traveled so much that I registered for the service with the TSA called pre-check. You can look it up. It's only in some cities. But I go to L.A. so much that L.A. is a city that has it. I, it goes against what I feel. Like, I'm, I'm a kind of big privacy person. So I had to, like, register with the TSA and actually answer interview questions and stuff like that. Like, kind of, like, pre-screen myself. So now when I go through LAX, sometimes they put me in this totally side like security line where it's like I don't have to take off coat, I don't have to like take off my belt and I can just walk on through, you know? Hmm. It's like a like they just turn down the <laughs> metal detector a like little bit. What is You're um good. what is that global entry thing? Have you seen that? Oh that's for like it gets you through immigration and passport control more quickly. Oh, okay. That's uh well, can I read this real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Factory twenty five, which sounds like a distribution company. Factory twenty five has picked up Sundance Berlin and South by Southwest title Kid Thing. From director David Zellner and his producer, cinematographer brother Nathan Zellner. The film will open in New York on May 24th and will expand through the spring and summer. It will also be available on cable. (laughs) Uh, iTunes, Amazon, Xbox, Sony PlayStation, and other digital outlets May 24th with a limited editions DVD book following later this year. Check out the synopsis below. And then you can read the synopsis. Look up Kid Thing if you want to find out what Nathan Zellner is up to. And it's playing at South by? Nope, it's already played. Oh. But I just saying, I just remember reading that it got picked up. That's so awesome. Good for him. Click. So Wait, was it at last South by? Yeah, it was last South by. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 
So back to we got to circle back here a little bit. Uh, so Sheer Lazar, uh, Jack, you're hosting on Thursday. Yes. Uh, I had the 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 extreme honor today of hosting uh, the show when my Twitter idol was on. It is Mr. Oh, excuse me, not Mr. Doctor Shaquille O'Neal was on What's Trending Today. What is his doctorate in? Uh, uh, organizational leadership. Oh, legit. <laughs> yeah, and he's a smart dude, man. He's a smart guy, and uh, yeah, I, I have I, a PhD in organizational leadership. Yeah. What? What's wrong? With you? <laughs> <laughs> you, it just sounds like something made do up. Do you have a fucking PhD? <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. Great guy. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you have a PhD? It is impossible to take a, anything but a low angle photo yeah, of that Brian, guy. You're like six one, right? Six I'm one? six two. You're six two, and he is a head above you. So he came on today, and he was promoting that he has a new YouTube channel, and he oh, has. He does. What? He does. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's his Shaq channel. And then he also has a service, and I'm going to not get it right now. I think it's called Tout. And it kind of sounded like a competitor to Vine, which, okay. I don't, I mean. That's a big like, market there. I don't know. Vine, Vine seems like it would be easy to compete with. Well, I thought Vine is owned by Twitter, right? Vine is owned yeah. by Twitter. Okay. They don't seem to have, like, a really strong connection there. Like, they not don't yet. Really, but they are definitely owned by Twitter. I got yeah. in an argument with somebody about it. Ashley does social media for IGN. So she was saying, no, Vine is not owned by Twitter. I was like, I, absolutely it absolutely is. is. Absolutely yeah. is. Well, that, that's not... Also, it's GIF, not GIF. Yeah, we got no, the big GIF. debate. Did we go over that? On, did we go over that in the podcast? Yeah, I think we'd mentioned it. I and she used a Vine with the IGN staff. She she posted a Vine with them at a par- Super Bowl party where they were all saying it's. They all think it's pronounced GIF. I think technically it's supposed to be pronounced GIF, but yeah. you just sound GIF. like a dick when you say it that way. Yeah, you do. You also you sound like a dick when you make a Vine at a Super Bowl party. Explain <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Sorry, Ashley. They are in San Francisco, Sorry, so it's okay. You also sound like a dick when you argue about the pronunciation of a of GIF. No, you don't. No, no. Because it's a word that people say. Well, how it's do you not a word, though. It's an it's acronym, isn't it? It stands for something. What yeah. does it stand for? Well, yeah, what does it stand for? Nailed it. Who knows? <laughs> what, you, what, what is it? Graphical interchange format. Hey. So, so graphical is said g, graphical. Yeah. GIF. Yeah, he says GIF. <laughs> he just said GIF, so I know he's in, I he's said in the What's ride. another word that if you pr- pronounce correctly, you sound like a dickhead? Um, I got a great again. one. Again? Isn't that how you pronounce it? No. I say against. Against? That's what I say. Yeah. 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 He's like a dick. Yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> uh, stupid. Yeah. I w- uh, aluminium is like right at the top of my list. Aluminium. But either either pronunciation is correct. I, I don't think aluminum is correct. I think aluminum is just a bastard. Aluminium? Yeah. Um, aluminium? We had like, I swear, a half an hour arguing about that on a podcast one time. Aluminium? Yeah, I remember that. Because I didn't realize it was spelled different. Yeah, you were coming at me and I was like, wait, if you'd have finished, I was like, spell I U M. But I remember that. Let me tell you how big. Let me tell you how big Shaq was. Okay, or is. I guess he still is somewhere in the world right now. That big. <laughs> but it, you know, uh, afterwards I took that goofy picture with him uh, backstage, and then Shira said before they got off stage, she said, "Oh, I'm supposed to take a picture with you because Shira's a pretty small person. She's not actually this big." Uh, <laughs> but she goes, "She goes. I was just supposed, supposed to take a picture with you because my friend said we'd be ridiculous to see us together because we're such different sizes." I'm sure everybody tells him yeah, that yeah. in the world because he's 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 the limiting factor in that picture. And he goes, he goes, <coughs> he goes. You want to show how different we are in size? He goes, yeah. So he grabs her and lifts her up. Oh, there's like, a picture. Oh, wow. Without even like, I mean, she had, she had no <laughs> clue was coming. And uh, he just lifts her up. And she's, I mean, I, I don't know how much she weighs, but she's a very small person. You can't weigh that much. A very thin lady. But, I mean, that's a person. And he just, like, lifts her up over his head. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> Had no problem holding her there either. That she's is impressive. holding, like, a very flat stance. She was doing, you kind of have to. I mean, she's kind of trapped there, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> just go limp like a cat. Yeah, exactly. That's like the ultimate way. <laughs> get into a fight or something, just pick him up and just hold him okay, up your head. Car like, accident. Right, there you go. Yeah. So Speaking go of which, ahead. man, Grumpy Cat was also here for South by Southwest. Grumpy Cat was here. Did you hear the lines were three hours long to see Grumpy Cat? What's fucking wrong with the world? Well, they're going to wait three goddamn hours. Don't get me wrong. I want to see Grumpy Cat. I'm not waiting three hours in the line. Are they allowed to touch yeah. it? I don't no. think so. No, there's there's so photos. Okay. There's actually an animated GIF of, of Grumpy Cat. Uh, animated sitting. GIF? Huh? Animated GIF? GIF? Uh, I got totally thrown off. It's an anim- animated GIF of Grumpy Cat sitting there and like multiple people rotating out and taking pictures with them. And it just says, kill me. It just looks like the saddest thing ever. It's like, you know, Aww. all these people making their best frowny faces next to Grumpy Cat. And it's like, that poor, poor animal. I should take a picture with Grumpy Cat. No, no, no one should take a frown. picture with Grumpy Cat. There he goes. It's, it's the second post in the Austin subreddit right now. <laughs> this says, kill me. <laughs> Apparently Ben Folds is in there too. He's one of the guys. Oh really? Yeah. It so. looks like it's green screened. No, that's him. That's that's poor, poor grumpy cat. <laughs> poor tartar sauce. 
Is that name Tartar Sauce? That, yeah. that cat has an well, unfortunate name. Apparently the cat's name is Tard. Yeah, I thought or it was and Tard. Be, yeah, and then it became famous, so they were like, oh, it's not Tard, it's Tartar Sauce. Tard is just short for Tartar Sauce. Yeah, that's what it is. T-A-R-D-A-R. -A -R. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the way everyone spells Tartar Sauce. Tartar. <laughs> So anyway, but like, yeah, he was up on the side of a building down on 6th Street, right? Yeah, next to Buffalo Billiards. There's like his giant face on the side of a building, like looking oh down oh. at the street. <laughs> there you go. Those of you watching the live stream right now get a nice face full of tart. Is it a her? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's oh. a her? I yeah. thought it was a dude cat. Yeah, that's oh, a female that cat. Ruins it. She's also like this big. Yeah, she's real, like real super tiny. tiny. Seriously? Yeah. But yeah, I would not wait three hours to meet a cat. No, absolutely not. Um, so StarCraft Two. Heart, Heart of the Swarm. Swarm comes out this week. Mm -hmm. What else comes out this week? I should know this. God of War. Sim City came out. Sim City came out last yeah. week. Yeah, actually, you know what? I, I, I'm, I didn't want to bring it up. I don't know why I brought it up. Oh, good. So, <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, I, I mean, it's like it's like it's such a pain in the ass with all the DRM and all that stuff. I mean, are you playing Sim City? No, no, that's not even. I let's came forget, up. Let's I, tr about I tried to. Let's not even talk about it. I came yeah. up with the ultimate business, new business. I own a bunch of servers, and I take them to every game release company for that initial burst of gamers, and then I piss off to the next launch, and I just go around with emergency servers like that. Like a triage Million. service? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, okay. Gavin's millions of servers <laughs> service. So you would just show up with what? Well, nobody- An airship? A Zeppelin? What are you coming? How are you arriving with millions of servers? You got a dirigible servers? full of servers. You're like a cable or something. A cable, <laughs> okay. A long spool cable. But <laughs> companies, companies don't want to buy enough servers <laughs> because they're only going to need that many right I at the hate beginning. To, I hate to break it to you. You can rent computing time. <laughs> you can totally computing do it. Service. We, rent, we rent servers for DayZ, for instance. For why, doesn't, why didn't EA do that then? I'm sure they did. I'm sure there's other things. It's like internal bandwidth capacity issues. You don't know what the specific problem is. From an outside perspective, it's like, oh, they just need more servers. Here we are talking well, about fucking SimCity. Yeah, you <laughs> you know know every, I'm trying to get off great. that. I, but listen, it's like... Well, okay, I, so God, hard, God, of, God of War Ascension, Heart of the Swarm... Um, a bunch of DLC comes out this Man, week. When did Wings of Liberty come out? Has it been almost three years now? Was it 09? No. StarCraft 2? No. Oh, so was it 10? Yeah. Was it that long ago? I'll look it up for you on my new iPhone 5. I think it's probably been almost three years. <laughs> wow, damn. Yeah, it was, we were in the old office, so yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I think, yeah, we were in the process of moving over here. Yeah. Man, that's a long time ago. Um, and then some DLC comes out this week. Uh, Awaken, the new DLC for Dead Space when, 3. Bioshock Infinite is in two weeks? Next week. Next week. Wait, no, no, Infinite... Um, Infinite, I think, might be two weeks. Yeah. Right there. Isn't it like one of the busiest March? Yeah, yeah. Well, see, the thing was... Uh, it's going to be like this from now on. Yeah, well, yeah. The, thing, the thing was a lot of games got pushed from the fall into the spring. And so that's what, like, all these games are now yeah, landing. And like, I yeah. still haven't played the Mass Effect 3 Citadel DLC. Oh, yeah. I bought it, but I, that came out last week. I still haven't even loaded it up. Yeah, you uh, did. No, I haven't. <laughs> I was trying to aggravate you. <laughs> that but. seemed to work pretty well. All right, you want to take, take an over-under here. Guess on... When Wings of Liberty came out, since you guys are both so interesting. Go. I'm going to say July 2010. Go. I'm going to say October 2010. You are correct. July 27, 2010. One does not forget Wings. things like that. It was during Comic-Con. Well, one could easily forget. No, nope. because I remember I was <laughs> at Comic-Con. I was like, that was, I think it was the last Comic-Con I've, I've been to. I was, I was so upset that the game was coming out while I was there. And I couldn't <laughs> play really? it right away. Yeah. <laughs> you were crushed. Yeah. Is that why you don't go to Comic-Con anymore? The narrowness yeah. of your life is just so astounding. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, it's just I like, can't take criticism from someone wearing a tie like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you feel like my tie? Don't you have a fixed gear bicycle to go get on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do it like that. I'll do it sideways. Oh, God. Jordan's Drive Jordan right crazy. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready for Heart of the Swarm. I haven't even bought it yet. I guess I should buy it through Battle.net and maybe yeah. preload it. We, you've had a beta code for that forever from Buckus. Yeah. But it's not single-player stuff. It's just multiplayer. Uh, oh. Do you play multiplayer StarCraft at all? Uh, I did when it first launched. I haven't played in a while. Oh, in, so uh, the whole two and a half uh, years. the whole Wings of Liberty thing was that ended with that ended with a a plot device uh, yeah, for sure a main character that they're now showing in the trailer. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I guess I didn't play Wings of Liberty. Yeah. So I don't understand that that happened in Wings of Liberty. The, what the stuff with. Yeah. The, the character. Yeah. With okay, Kerrigan. We, we, the I, stuff I, with I Kerrigan. Can, we can spoil it's it. In it's in the trailer. Three years. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in the trailer. With Rainer rescuing Kerrigan. That yes. was in Wings of Liberty. That was at the end of Wings of Liberty. I, I gotta go back and play that then. Yeah. Because, I don't know. Yeah, you I can watch the cinematics if you want. <laughs> I, should, I should do that. I yeah. should cinematics do that. are beautiful. Like, is that, that's internal, right? That's not blurred. No, that's but, internal. That's awesome. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, Blizzard is, I mean, the animation team at Blizzard is like right up to me. It's up there with Pixar. I mean, yeah. Love you, guys, JB. To me, to me those, <laughs> those uh, he doesn't do cinematics though. Yeah, but he does animation. Yeah, he does animation. But, uh, the, yeah, the, all the cinematics for all the Blizzard games have always been like 
head and shoulders above everybody else in the business. And that continues. I mean, to the point where with collector's editions of their games, they would include DVDs of the cinematics. And they should. So you could watch them, yeah. Yeah. I think the best cinematic that I've ever seen in any game is the origin, essentially, the moment, the betrayal moment with Kerrigan. Because uh, it happened in the first StarCraft, mm -hmm. and then they made a cinematic for it. It happened in-game in the first StarCraft, and they made a cinematic for it in the second StarCraft game. And it's fucking amazing. It's really yeah. good. Jen Taylor, right, is the voice of Kerrigan. Is she? I believe she is. Man. Wow. She, she has does, a lot of voices. She does everything. Jen Taylor is... Um, she plays uh, Cortana. No, it wasn't. It's, I think oh, it's Trisha. Oh, it's Trisha Helfer. It's Trisha Helfer. Trisha Helfer, Helfer yeah. You are right. Damn. Trisha Helfer they does do the. Uh, sound alike, though. Kerrigan. Do they? That's right. Yeah. Hmm? No. Disagree. I have a hard time. Like, I. I Trisha I Helfer, by the way, has also played number six in Battlestar Galactica. In Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. She's the, she was the Cylon in Battlestar Galactica. She was the really super hot one. The blonde yeah. one who uh, only Gaius saw in season one. Only Gaius, yeah. Um, I just said only Gaius. Yes, I can confuse Not Gaius. <laughs> Um, I almost drank coffee from two Yeah, ago. That's, that's, our, that's our coffee from uh, the live stream we did on Friday. That would have been not good. That was fun. Yeah, that was cool, man. Yeah. Richard Gary was here. So for people listening to the audio version of this podcast, we're going to have highlights from that live stream with Richard Gary at, at the end of this week's podcast. Uh, audio highlights. Yeah, audio highlights. Oh, very cool. Very so, cool. So uh, we, we, we cut together some Dude, of the high points. I was so excited by that. I mean, I, if you've ever listened to the podcast before, I said this on the, the live stream that we did. Uh, I mean, I've talked about Richard Gary before. I mean, the Ultimate Games. That is easily the biggest influence on me getting involved in, I guess, home gaming is the way to say it. I played arcade games, um, but, you know, there wasn't, besides like Atari, and definitely with, there was nothing on PC at the time. Um, uh, the Ultimate Series is what got me into, into home gaming, mm -hmm. like serious home gaming. It was just like, it See. was incredible. And it was great to be able to sit down with him and talk about all that stuff and, it was awesome. Yeah, see, your Gary, that's like like my my John Romero and Carmack. Like mm -hmm. I like Doom and id Software. Actually, Romero gave a speech. He did a panel at, at South by Interactive. Uh, it was like the making of Doom. And I'm like, of course, I, re I hear about it afterwards. I'm like, I would have killed the gun that thing. Go to that thing. Uh, Romero's an interesting story too, because then he went off and started Ion Storm, and then what's he doing now? Uh, he's still making games. I think he's is he back at id? No, no, Carmack's still at id. Yeah, Carmack's at id. Um, Carmack's he, also, like Richard Garriott, heavily involved in space. Yeah, private space Armadillo stuff. space. Armadillo yeah. aerospace. Yeah. But, like, uh, they didn't win the X Prize to get into... To be the first. Orbit, but they did win an X Prize uh, later. There's, there was a later it was one, like I the, think. It was like the liftoff and touchdown, right? I want to say, they, I wanna say they, landed, they landed something on the moon. Like it was a no, I don't thing. think so. It wasn't that? No. Uh, maybe it was a landing thing. Maybe I was confused. I'm gonna I look it up. I think Jack's right. Yeah. yeah. There was something about like like basically taking off, hovering for a certain amount of time, and then landing, like ver like vertically landing, and uh, like the first group that could do that multiple times within a certain span would mm -hmm. get another X prize. Wow. And so that's it's, pretty cool. I think they tied with somebody else, if I recall correctly. Because isn't uh, is it Elon Elon Musk? Is that yeah. his name? Isn't he working with with Carmack? Well, he he owns SpaceX. Oh, oh, he owns SpaceX. Yeah, he started SpaceX. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. They, um, uh, they just opened a Tesla dealership in Austin. Yeah, I saw that. It's up in the domain. Up in the domain, yeah. Well, and they have a service center up on Burnett. How do you hmm. say that road? Burnett. Burnett. Burnett? I yeah. say Burnett. Like Carol. That's a stupid, one of the stupid things about Austin is that we have so many streets that are just pronounced completely incorrectly. Like or, what? Or streets that are different depending on where you are on them. No, there's a lot that are just pronounced incorrectly. Like the word M-A-N-O-R is a word. It says manor. That's how you say it. We don't say manor road. We say manor road. Mm -hmm. You know, you live right by manor road. What well, is it someone's name? Uh, I'm, probably. I'm, probably, yeah. Probably Clive Manor. <laughs> Clive Manor. Even Mueller, the Mueller development's like that. It's supposed to be Miller. No, really? it's not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Mueller's supposed to be pronounced Miller. Hmm. Well, why would it be spelled M-U-E-L-L-E-R? Or maybe it was supposed to be Miller and it's been butchered to Mueller somehow. That's but what you just said. And that's what I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> it's more rude to <laughs> see <assume laughs> someone knows you than to reintroduce yourself. Well, so we, we have Manchak, which is spelled Minchaka, or Manchaka. That's the biggest one. But then the city is, like, then there's something like, there's a person named Minchaka, like M-E-N, instead of Man, anyway. That's, a what we're getting about Minchaka. as local as you can get on this podcast this Let's talk about coaching change. I get a lot of old uh, jokes. Let's talk about like it. Andy Reid going to Kansas names City. Confused. I think, right? Is that right, Jordan? Shut up, Jack. God, we're trying to move on over I'm here. I'm talking about coaching changes over here. Yeah, shut up. Is it San Jacinto or San Jacinto? Jacinto. Jacinto, Jacinto okay, is see, the. Okay, see, I don't know because I don't know it's Spanish. Jacinto at all. and Gears of War, right? Yeah. Okay, it's, that's an example of stuff I don't understand in this. Oh, uh, someone is telling me the Ultima 4 is free on GOG.com. 
That is Benjamin Mueller. <laughs> That's not a total coincidence. Uh, or Moeller. That's good old games, right? <laughs> yeah, so right. thank you. I appreciate that. Um, should I tell you about I got so I got a new phone. My iPhone, my iPhone cracked, my iPhone 4. Yeah, people have been commenting about yeah, it. Yeah, and crazy. so I, fi- I finally went, I went out this morning and got, got an iPhone 5. How do, how do you crack your iPhone 4? <laughs> I just dropped it out of my truck. Oh. So now, if you ever use an iPhone, I think that's the biggest weirdness to go back one phone than cool. that one to the previous one. Yeah, just because of the so weight. So weird. Oh, if I yeah, like use that for a me. month and then use the, your, your old one. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be bizarre. Shock. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't imagine going to one of those. There was leaked photos of that new Samsung Galaxy out today. The thing's like this big. It's, it's, it was enormous. It yeah, people like have got a, a bit table. mental with those tablet phones, haven't they? Where it's just oh, like the tab. Wedge it, it into a pocket. Just, they must just fill a pocket with some sort of molding material, pull it out, and then make a phone of that shape. Yeah, exactly. but then some exactly. people wear skinny jeans like you. You can't fit that shit in skinny I'm jeans. I'm doing laundry. These are the only jeans I have today. Oh, the fact that you still own those jeans. Are these the ones you bought online? These are the ones I bought when I was drunk by accident. <laughs> <laughs> how do you accidentally buy okay. jeans? I accidentally got skinny jeans. I didn't jeans. know how skinny they were. <laughs> it's easy Wait, to do. Are skinny jeans? It's easy to do <laughs> if you don't, you don't know when you buy something online. What did I buy that was so ridiculous? <laughs> Forget it was now. <laughs> Um, it was completely off scale when we got it in. What the fuck was it? Was it the cat sombrero? No. It was supposed to be like a normal that sombrero. That was really was like, small, though. No. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> it was, it was Boom. shelves for Boom. the bathroom in here. It was this big set of shelves, and when Amazon delivered it, it was like this big. <laughs> <laughs> what? This big. I just, there was no scale associated with this thing alive. Did they have it, like, like, in a room like a cabinet. But it was just a miniature little like jewelry box. What? Oh, that's food. That's the other one I bought. So I bought, I bought. Um, maybe we have some from next door, so we can get them. So we were buying silverware. God, I remember this. And I think, I think either Kara or Jen had already ordered them. And I said, Oh no, no, I, I ordered them today. I got, I re- just replaced the order we had before. And somehow I bought forks, knives, and like little, <laughs> little ice cream spoons. <laughs> <laughs> they were that big, so our spoons were just these little tiny little tasters. <laughs> did you eat with them? <laughs> I did. It would take forever. <laughs> you were trying to eat like soup with it. You're like, oh my god. Because the first thing Tori tried to play it off of Yvonne goes, she goes, you ordered the wrong size spoons. I go, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. I, I ate an entire like jar of yogurt with it, a little little thing of yogurt with it. It took me four hours <laughs> to do it. <laughs> See a spoon and a knife. They would suck if they were small. But right. I think a fork would be just as good. works at any scale. A you fork need, you just need at to any scale? Them. I would disagree with that. You can get a fork. It's like little prongs and... It what, what if it's giant? You'd only be able to eat a little bit. <laughs> yeah. of like a, tri- like a trident. <laughs> you said any scale. That's a good point. What if you had an enormous pitchfork? <laughs> well, it'd just be like spearing, wouldn't it? It's fine. <laughs> Eating a steak with a... <laughs> stab <laughs> Gavin, I want to make you back this up. I want to take you out and give you a pitchfork and a steak knife and take you to a dinner at a nice <laughs> restaurant where you have to eat with a giant fork. <laughs> oh, Kara has them. Bring them oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Ah, there they are. You can see, like, how, like... This is normal size spoon. Right. Here, I'll hold up here for the camera. This is normal size spoon. A spoon and that's a spoon. And that's what I. <laughs> <laughs> about a quarter of the size for those. Who I, was, I was just like, these are totally fine. Chip, chip. So, because I mean, imagine this on Amazon. It's like I'll put it over here in the black. It's just freestanding by itself. I was like, that's a spoon. <laughs> that's that not a dirty a trick. Spoon. And then these things, it's like, we got 2,000 of these things. <laughs> 2,000. <laughs> we do. Jesus. It looks exactly like this one. Yeah, they look cool. exactly the same. That's it's just shrunken. A thing of I don't know what it's for. What you? I think they're coffee stirrers is what they are. But you have to be a lame Yeah, you burn the tips of your fingers, wouldn't you? You'd be like, what's that? Just the tips, though. Yeah, <laughs> but that's all. No big deal. But I had, I, had a, I had a very Gus moment today when I bought my iPhone 5. And I want, I want to understand, when iPhone 5 came out, I, I said I was going to upgrade because this is the most used device I have. I mean, I use this thing constantly all day. I always call it like a Star Trek device. It is amazing. I think it's worth the money to upgrade it just for like whatever small feature they add to it. Because it, I use it so much and it like save me so much time in my life. It's actually worth it. But I didn't upgrade to the 5 when it first came out because I had a perfectly fine working iPhone 4. And I knew at some point I was going to fucking drop it and break it. And I thought it was going to be in like the next like two months or three months. It actually ended up being like six or seven months. And uh, sure enough, I, I was convinced too, if I stopped and just bought an iPhone 5, I would drop the phone that day and break my brand new iPhone 5. But that's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's totally legitimate. I, don't, I, broke I, my I just phone don't understand with... that argument. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm with Gavin on this one. I mean, why? Because you're going to break it anyway. 
But I had the drop. The fact I had that the careless sh- drop. The fact that you've just bought that doesn't mean you're not going to break that. It's, you could drop it yeah, tonight. Exactly. And then I'm less idiot. likely to break what it. What do you mean? You, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Because I had my careless moment of, oh, should I drop my phone? No, no, it but it's a random act. Yeah, that, just because it doesn't reset. Is that like, why you have two children? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You're not actively <laughs> trying to drop your phone. No, I didn't actively. So I got last, last week, I, I dropped it. I got excited. Then I realized I had Apple Care on it, which could have replaced the screen. So I went into the Apple store, said, will you replace the screen? And they were like, no, your Apple warranty doesn't cover this. And I was still like, I was like, yes. And the guy's like, what's, what's wrong with you? So I said, well, how much is it to replace the glass on it? And it was like $199 to replace the glass on the iPhone 4 that I broke. Or it was $400 to buy the phone. So I said, I'm just going to buy the phone for $400. Because then it's like, I felt like in my mind, that consumer math, I'm only paying $200 for this, for this phone. <laughs> you know? And so I did that and I got it. And then he goes, cool. He goes, he goes, well, here, let me take it uh, and I'll check your serial number on it. And he did something with it. And he, this was actually on my iPhone 4. He was doing this to check the warranty. So he, did, he took the iPhone 4, I gave it to him, and I unlocked and I handed it to him. And he went to go check it. And then I had that moment where I didn't have anything to do. So I went to reach for my phone, and he got it, and I go, and I went to reach, and I go, oh. And then just sat, <laughs> I just sat there in the Apple store like this. <laughs> I had no like, idea. You don't know what to do with your hands yeah. if there's not an iPhone in it? It's like <laughs> when you pull the hard drive out of the computer that's on it. Just, it's just like... <laughs> yeah. I love it's the second you gave it to him, you went to reach for your phone. Like a, like, a, like a reflex. It's like, that's what I do when I'm by myself in like a public situation. I have nothing to do. The worst. I'm going to check something. And I had, so I literally was like, and then I found myself. Like, <laughs> I, I turned like 90 degrees and looked at the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't know what to do with your body now. Like, I had no idea what to do with myself. Feels weird. What happens to me a lot is I'll be on my, on my mobile phone on hold. And I'm like, God, this is boring. Where's my phone? And I like start reaching yeah. in my pocket for it to do something. I'm like, Oh wait, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm on hold. I was talking about that on the, like on, like before we started the podcast. I was FaceTiming with someone one time, and I was like, "Oh shit, where's my phone?" And I literally was FaceTiming, holding it in my hand. It's like while you were looking for your while phone. I was looking for my Did phone. Did you say that out loud, and the person on the other end was like, "I think uh, I think I like I was like I thought it to myself, then I looked and I was like, "Oh fuck," and then I didn't explain it. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those dumb things, one of those dumb moments. Uh, that's happened to me too were you not, with my parents. Were you not worried that he would look through your stuff? I'm like, totally, I'm totally when he took the phone, it. did he go? Whoa. I will continue to go. go. Then you look at you and go, nice, sir. Well, that's, yeah, that's congratulations. Like, Brandon elbowed a woman in the face because she took his phone. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? In the back of my car. She, he elbowed a woman. Like, she was looking through his photos. And he freaked that, out. No. And he went, oh, and reached for so it wait, and, like, popped her right in the face. Was it just, like, in the scramble, or did he actually go straight? I don't know. It was, it was behind I, me. I just heard him go, ah! And then, He's like, the phone hit the ground. scramble. Sure. It's a scramble. I'm sure, I'm sure he, he threw, threw a bow. Though. He panicked. Only Gavin would purposely punch someone in the face. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What, so. you get punched in the face? By yeah, I was filming Gavin. We were all out downtown, and I was filming him like this. I was leaning against a wall, and he's doing this with his hand, and then he just it's, whams it's my, me. Uh, it's the signature move. He yeah. whams me right in the face, but he misses my phone and just hits my nose. <laughs> so the whole video is me going, ah, and the phone dropping, and you laughing. Did we ever put that up? Nope. No, we should. <laughs> we should. So I noticed, too, on the, on the, the video that we just played, which will be in the link dump, but they're going to put that hopefully in there. Uh, I saw Michael and Lindsay in there. I did not see them at the party the entire night. Oh, they showed they up a little late. Oh, did they? they yeah. yeah, yeah. I totally, I totally missed them. But yeah. that's, that's the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I looped back for literally nothing. No, it was funny. Like the party is, it's crazy how many people work here now. Like I sat down and looked and I was like, geez, like, like there's so many people that work for Rooster Teeth now. It's like, wow, look at all these animators I've yeah. never met before, really. And like I've, I've, you know, seen them, but I've never really talked to them. And I don't know if it was kind of actually them. cool to get a, like an introduction. About ten minutes after we started the live stream. They all came in here and started eating our sandwiches that are over there. <laughs> like we, have, uh, we have food for the crew who works here late. Those are good sandwiches, man. Bernie hates them. And uh, I, like, there was a, like, a line yeah, of animators who came They're in so and good. started going through the sandwiches very <laughs> silently and then walked right out. Like the vultures. Do you remember that time you made tortilla soup and you said, come on over next door for tortilla soup and I, in about nine minutes it was all gone? Yeah, it was when we first opened the annex, which is where we filmed the podcast. And I, was, so I thought, oh, I'll make tortilla soup because some people have like made the sacrifice of moving over the annex and it it was kind of debatable who was going to be over here and who wasn't going to be over here. So I thought, we'll have like a little housewarming party for the annex and I'll make tortilla soup. And then I just posted to the everyone list, hey, come over and get some tortilla soup. They fucking showed up. Like, I mean, it was like. <laughs> I think Kathleen came over like nine and a half minutes after you sent that email. Yeah. And there was none left. She's mad at me about it, too. And I was like, <laughs> Clearly I didn't, didn't make anything. enough. What is in that? What's in, a, in tortilla soup? It's well, just like. It's like chicken soup. It's chicken broth soup, and then you actually just throw in like tortilla chips at the end. And there's like corn and but don't they go soggy? Ingredients. Yeah, uh, well, it's like cereal, kind of in a way. Like you eat it before it goes completely soggy, but it doesn't matter. Not for me. Does that yeah. does that gross you out? Gavin hates soggy. Anything stuff. soggy, man. Anything soggy. What yeah, about a vagina? Nothing that is. 
What? Would you ever what? describe a vagina as soggy? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to come no. up with something that he would say yes. But nothing that is soggy hard, plunge. nothing that is hard normally, <laughs> is ever better soggy. So like a dick. When's yeah. The, when, no, what are we talking about <laughs> genitals? What about, what about ice cream? Oh, listen to Gavin. Poor <laughs> fucking Gavin. Why are we talking about genitals? No, I mean... It's not his genitals, so obviously yeah. it's not relevant. But name something that is usually hard, and when it's soggy, is okay. And not gross. I can come up with something. Hold on a second. I you can't say, come up with anything. I say, literally can't come up with anything. You could say, uh, like, Fritos and a Frito pie. As they've been like kind of sitting there for a while. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's actually pretty tasty. You think most of the country or the world knows what a Frito pie is? No, I didn't no. know what it was. Yeah, so basically, basically what, what they do is they, these are served at like high school football games yeah. in Texas. Basically, they basically take a bag of Fritos and they cut the side of it open so it's long. You're holding it long ways, and then they just dump chili and then cheese and onions in there, and they mix it up, and it's probably the best thing that's ever been created. In any kitchen it, it anywhere. That was one of the first things you made me when I moved here. When oh, I was yeah? staying at your house, you were like, hey, you want a Frito pie? I'm just like, what the hell is that? Is that the only thing you know how to cook? No, I can cook. <laughs> yeah? What's your favorite thing to cook? My, probably, I like cooking ribs. ribs it's it's fun to do. Oh, it's, it's a grill. Um, I'm gonna, I make spaghetti. I make pretty good spaghetti. So Should I don't play? cook very often, but, you know. But when I do. When I do. Spaghetti. spaghetti. Dos Equis. <laughs> no, somebody's tweeting the scumbag Steve that we're talking about on the podcast. Oh. <laughs> and he's coming back. What podcast? What are they saying about me? <laughs> <laughs> Really nice guy. He was awesome. No, he was cool. It was kind of like, I, 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 I seriously love that he's embraced that. You know, like he's like, that's his thing. He's like, all right, fine. I'm going to roll with it. You know, like some people get all pissed off and like if, you know, something like that were to, to happen. Well, if you're like, a meme, you're only a meme because you're very lucky, right? So you might as well unlucky. milk that. Or unlucky. Yeah. You think Matt Brian's psyched to be? But you can't yeah, get yeah, Brian. He totally, he's posted he's with totally his, getting laid for He's it. posed with his own picture. Really? You yeah. can't try and be a meme. It's like you can't try and force something to be viral. You totally can. Yeah. The uh, overattached girlfriend was basically that. She invented that character. I don't know what that is. Really? The overattached girl girlfriend? Like this. She stares. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Wow, that's good, Barb. Go to Barb doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, cut There you go. <coughs> that's not very your, good. Your teeth are kind of creepy. See, Barb, your teeth are so white. Oh, that is creepy. You don't know what overly attached girlfriend is. How do you sit next to Ray all <laughs> day and you don't know what that is? The oh, wait, not that Ray has an overly attached yeah, girlfriend. You, you just knows what memes she's, are. She's uh, her. <laughs> yeah, she's from Dallas, actually. Uh, I've never seen that in my life. You've never seen her in your life. Do you not no. ever You're on the internet like all the time. I don't, don't know. No, I don't go on Reddit. By the way, the internet. Since nice. since he's come up and he's tweeting, he's tweeting about it. People are tweeting him. If you guys want to follow Scumbag Steve, he is at <coughs> Blake Boston six one seven B L A K E Boston. Did I ever tell you how six one seven on on his website? Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you here for a second. Sorry. He has the story about like uh, the picture and the history of it, and I guess he was taken when he was like fifteen or sixteen. And on his website, he writes that his mom took the picture, and uh, when she first saw the Scumbag Steve meme, that she cried about it. Oh. In a happy way? Oh, there no, you no. go. She... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Nice. Okay, what were you going to say, Barbara? Um, remember a couple podcasts ago we were talking about Brian Dunkelman? Yes. yes. He has, like, hardly, like, any... Easy. Go ahead. <laughs> Move along. Is he regular? He's not very, like, he's not very... Big in social media, mm -hmm. as I would think he would be. Mm -hmm. Said lightly. I love it when people are like tiptoeing <laughs> around yeah. the wording. Ooh. Well, how many followers did you say you have? I don't remember, but I'm sure you do. apparently he got a whole lot from our podcast. And he was like, what is this Rooster Teeth podcast? And then people were, I guess, tweeting back at him saying that there was someone named Dunkelman on this podcast. And then he started following me, and now I'm following him. And it's like, we have this dialogue every now and then. It's really Not after weird. this discussion. <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Stimulating conversation here. Uh, I've, I've had, um, <laughs> no, I've I mean, had, after she's insulting his Twitter followers. <laughs> my, my Twitter is Jack underscore P, and I have people who will write Jack P, and every now and then he'll respond and be like, I think you're talking to the wrong Jack, and like he'll get back and forth with me. I think he actually works at Microsoft, too. Oh, really? Or he's a tech guy or something like that. I've looked up variations of my name, and people just like tweet these random people about stuff. Yeah. And I'm just, I feel bad for them. It's like, what the fuck are these people talking about? <laughs> maybe maybe that's what's happening to me when I don't understand what the hell people are saying on Twitter. Oh. Maybe they're meaning to talk to somebody else. That's interesting. I never thought about like that. Like the other, like B E R N I E. Have you ever have you ever looked on Facebook to see if there's any other Bernie Burnses? Yeah, remember the only reason I have a Facebook account is because somebody in the community made a Facebook account for me and was faking my Facebook account for I found out two and a half years, and was like talking to my high school friends and stuff like that. That's and so business creepy. Uh, partners. And business partners, right? Yeah. They were friends with business partners, right? That's dangerous. That was fucking shitty, dude. Yeah, that's frightening. Really shitty. The uh, and the way I found out about it was. Uh, they just heard about it on Xbox Live that somebody had made friends with me on on, uh, on Facebook. And I don't have a Facebook account. They go, oh, well, they're posting all, 
you know, your all your journals from Rooster Teeth are being posted up there as though they're your updates. Yeah, it had like your high school on it and yep. all your like work information. Friends with people I went to high school with, yeah, it kind of sucked. So. Yeah, that's not cool. It's weird, like, who, who in their right mind does that and thinks, like, oh, this is a good idea? No one. No one yeah. in their right mind yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. does that. I, I, I don't understand the logic behind that, like, sort of assuming you, someone's life. You can't. Yeah, that's There's weird. no logic there. <laughs> Man. So are you excited about North Korea blowing up the world? Oh, just ignore them. Aha. So I talked about, what was, what was it on the podcast, two, three weeks ago? Something, something like, like that. that. And since then, shit's gotten real. Has it? It's yes. still exactly the same. They know no that shit has not gotten real. No, the, South the, the Korea is on alert. The, it, South Korea is always on alert. No, dude. no. They the tr- situation they, has not they, changed. They, they, no, they've cut off direct communication they with South Korea. They cut a phone line. Which, a which phone is breaking, line is which gone. Which is breaking an agreement they've had dude, for 60 years. They just have to pay the bill. Not a big deal. <laughs> no, it's not like AT&T shut off their phone service. The f- they the, actively said, we're no longer speaking to you. And like, and they, they this said, is a petulant child wanting attention. With Just a nuke, fucking ignore them. They have a nuke. Who cares? We have like five thousand. That's of like them. this thing. Oh, it's a five-year-old with a chainsaw. Just a, whatever, he'll be fine. I've got it's more like, chainsaws no, than no, a five-year-old. Terrible. What? I'm just I've telling you, man, this is my theory. Eventually, all science or all technology is going to proliferate to the point where some just assholes have it. But is it is it There's, wrong that I'm not I'm not worried? There's so many people everywhere that I feel like I probably won't die. No, it's totally fine not to worry. Don't be worried. Don't be worried about not worrying. Like I mean, if, if nukes just came flinging at America, go ahead. I won't get hit. <laughs> you mean you specifically? It's like you're not gonna catch one. I just think I, I would. One landing on I you. just think odds are that I won't die. Yeah, but you gotta consider the fact, Gavin, with your very limited skill set, you don't want to live in a post-apocalyptic environment on any level. That is true. How long does it take for radiation from a nuke to kill you? It depends how close you are, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think it depends on your exposure. It depends on a lot of things. Okay, so, so I right. see the mushroom cloud on the horizon. Better head out. Is that too late? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at the time. Gotta get going. You might have time. It's on the horizon. <laughs> I just see a reflection of the giant explosion. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not too bright and you don't get killed by the brightness. I mean, could you leave? Why would you evacuate before the explosion? Too? I mean, isn't that the indication that there's a nuclear war going on when you see an explosion? Why would I, what do you mean? Why would I? Well, you see, when you bugger out then, it's like, why would you, like, you should evacuate on random <laughs> days in case a nuclear explosion is going to come? Is that the way it's going to work for you? No, no he's saying once you see the mushroom cloud. Well, the mushroom cloud is the explosion. I mean, why That's would what you... what I'm saying. Yeah, why like, would you leave before that? I didn't say, didn't say leave that. before that. Okay. You're crazy. No, you're saying it's too late. <laughs> There's no other time to leave. You can't leave until the fucking bomb goes off. No, he's saying if you see it on the horizon, is it too late? It's in... <laughs> Are you dead already? It's the radiation from that, uh, which I imagine moves faster than I can get out of there. Uh, but like light, isn't it? Ra- radiation. <laughs> anyway, so let me get Radiation might fall somewhere between the speed of Gavin and the speed of the light. <laughs> that narrow window of, of speed. I think it gets blown by the wind. Like, uh, like, was airborne. like yeah, radioactive it, dust it, and it like atta- the particulate. Stuff, yeah. Oh, well, I'm good then. <laughs> Why? Because you can outrun dust. The wind. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Free, faster than dust. Dust is lazy there. <laughs> dust is lazy. <laughs> All right, it's time for Gavin or Google. Yay! Google or Gavin. Yay! All right, we're yeah. gonna play we our to game. Play this time. Gavin yeah, I don't, yeah, or I don't. Google. Do you know how this works, Jeff? I don't know how this goes. I will explain it to you. Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Because Gavin asks the stupidest things on the planet. Clearly. And I also got excited or I would always laugh what? at how Google would autocomplete my searches yes. to something ridiculously stupid that everyone on Google has apparently searched for enough that Google thinks this is a normal question okay, to ask. Okay, yeah, yeah. So what I do is I take a short phrase, beginning of a, like a question essentially, and I give it to Gavin. He comes up with a question to complete the phrase. I also then punch it into Google. It auto-completes for me. I pick the most ridiculous <laughs> query there. And then you guys try to figure out who said this, Gavin or Google. Are you guys ready to play? Let's play. I'm All really right. excited. We need a theme song. Gavin or Google. Google or Gavin. Which one said it? Let's find out. Hey, I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, that couldn't have gone better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this week. <laughs> this week on Gavin or Google. I did the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 do it again. <laughs> yeah. Gavin or Google. Google or Gavin. Which one said it? Let's find out. Hey, I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the money shot. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh my god. All right. First up. First up. The phrase that I gave to both Gavin and Google was, what is the most? What is the most? 
Are you going for like the Wink Martindale hosting style? But no, no. By the way, I'm not going for any style. Are any of these uh, user submitted, or did you uh, come up with these? No, I came up with these. Okay, okay. okay but the users what? have been great, and they have been submitting. What are they hashtagging? What is the most? <laughs> Gavin or Google? Gavin or Google? Hashtag <laughs> Gavin or Google? Is Google or Gavin or Gavin or Google? <laughs> Gavin or Google. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. What is Bob the most? Is on so here's what. Here's the two. Here's the. You have to. I'm gonna give you two. Oh, so things. one is Gavin. One is Google. One is Very Gavin. Very good, one is Jack. Oh, wow. Consolation prize. I thought, was, I thought he was gonna give us one, and we nope. say whether or not. I'm gonna give you both. I'm gonna give you both. So <laughs> the, the phrase was, "What is the most?" One said, "What is the most expensive pet?" <laughs> <laughs> and the other asked, "What is the most boring job in the world?" Gus, you wanna go first? I'm Which one is say... Gavin? Which one is Google? Ah, uh, the most expensive pet is Gavin. And then so the most boring job is Google. Of course. Barb, what do you got? I will say expensive pet is Google. Okay. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say expensive pet is Google and boring job is Gavin. Gus, you are correct. Oh. Gavin wanted to know what the world's most expensive <laughs> pet was. <laughs> what was it? I don't know. I never looked oh. it up. Oh. <laughs> I'll we, look it up later. We, 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 we gotta look it up. Find out what the most expensive yeah. pet is. It goes from Gavin to Google now. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin to Google. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, but I'm feeling lucky to put that in uh, when, when you look up your query. Okay. All right. I like that we'll learn oh. something. All right. So the next phrase that I gave to both Gavin and Google is, "What happens when astronauts?" And you have to you have to complete that. What happens when astronauts? <laughs> All right. What happens when astronauts? One of them said. What happens when astronauts fart? <laughs> the other said, what happens when astronauts think that they're upside down? <laughs> <laughs> See, I want to say fart because that seems like Gavin. It seems like his brand of humor. But <laughs> when, what happens when astronauts are upside down? White Lion Cubs, $138,000. White Lions are $138,000. Great. All right. No, we know. All Gavin, right. you're so when an astronaut farts, or when an astronaut thinks they're upside what down. What happens when an astronaut <laughs> farts, or what happens when an astronaut thinks they are upside I'm go first. down? All right, go ahead, Barbara. I'm gonna say farts is Google. I'm gonna say farts is Gavin. I'm gonna say farts is Gavin. <laughs> farts was Google. Gavin. Oh, oh damn. Gavin wanted to know what happened when <laughs> astronauts think that they're upside <laughs> down. Gavin. So Jack, what, you're what? out. You're out. This is a tiebreaker between oh, Barb okay. and I didn't realize it was a single elimination. Or is there a cash prize? Whatever. Well, no, no. There's only three questions. So There should be a cash yeah, prize. You're mathematically yeah. impossible You're mathematically to win. eliminated. Um, I'm, I'm so what do you think happens when astronauts think they're upside down? <laughs> well, like... <laughs> but it, but you, know when, uh, <laughs> you know when you what wake up... What is upside down? No, no, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like... You know when... Sometimes you wake up and you don't remember what room you're in or uh -huh. which, way you're, like, which way you're facing. Uh -huh. It takes a little bit of time. Which way you're facing? <laughs> <when> you're <sleeping? laughs> Shut up. Okay, go on. But if an astronaut is... <laughs> if, if their eyes are closed... <laughs> Keep going. Don't, don't stop. Finish don't your know statement. What way up there? <laughs> If their eyes are closed? <laughs> no, the question, you, you said, what happens when an astronaut thinks they're upside down? Yeah. That's not the same. <laughs> no. Well, if, he's, if he thinks he's upside down, <gasps> like, the, like <laughs> the fridge would be upside down, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. It's all relative. All right. Okay, okay. It's well, right. relative to one point, but what's the point? The final, the final, the final category. phrase <laughs> for Gavin or Google is, has there ever been? <laughs> I'm not going to get through this one. Oh, no. <laughs> Has there so ever been? So one of these was said by a person we know, like, in person. We live our life next to this person. The other was asked by so many people that it actually showed up as a query on Google. All right. Has there ever been a real-life zombie? <laughs> That's the first one. And the other one is, has there ever been two of the same person? <laughs> well, it's my turn to go first. Shit. I'm going to say two of the same person is Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Barbara. Um, which one's know. which? Um, well, I mean, this is all for nothing, so I'm going to go the opposite. I would, I would agree with Gus, but I'm out. I'm going to say the uh, same person is Gavin. That's, that's, what, that's what I said. Oh, sorry. Google. Gus, you are now one for one lifetime across Gavin or Google. You win this week. Hey. Hey. Gavin wanted to know if there's ever been two of the same person <laughs> so ever. Well, do you, surely do, do you think there's ever been two of the same person? Well, surely it gets to the point where someone 
is so genetically close to someone else that so, you have to say that the same. So person. you're saying, has there ever been two people who are genetically identical? Yeah. You know, like twins. Oh, well, I need a clean. You it. said that you <laughs> said <laughs> the <laughs> fingerprints, so but they're genetically the identical. Kid. That's how you defined it. Oh my face! I start crying when we play this. Oh my god! Genetically <laughs> identical, twins. But they're not. If they you if they're said genetically identical. Yeah. But they don't have the same fingerprints. But they're genetically it, identical. But are they the same person? But, what, yeah. it, but if genetically identical doesn't actually mean identical, then what else isn't identical? I don't know. Maybe one of them circumcised and the other isn't. Yeah, man. Yeah, just get out here. <laughs> oh my god. Can you die. pass me a piece? Yeah, yeah can we get another one for Barbara as well? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but th think about the other one. So many people have wanted to know if there's ever been a real life <laughs> zombie. I mean, how many of you have to type that into Google before that actually shows but then, up? Yeah, that's a similar thing. It's, what do you define as a zombie? Do you define it as someone who died but is still alive? No, no, no. Wow. Can we repeat that? Will you please just repeat what you said? No, 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 like, some people may have missed that. You can have someone. You can have someone who's died but they're still on. <laughs> No, like, <laughs> I would say the Texas definition of a zombie is someone who has died but is still alive. But you can be, you can be powered on. But uh, go ahead. Yeah. You mean like brain dead? You're like, like, a weekend, like weekend at Bernie's is what you're trying to say. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> We're familiar with the concept of brain dead, Captain. <laughs> We're intimately familiar with that. You mean I'm, alive but dead? But, that, but yeah, but at what point is the zombie a zombie? I think Does the, concept, zombie have to the be... concept of a zombie, as people traditionally think of it, is someone who has died and then comes back. It's a zombie. We all know yeah. what it is. It's a dead thing that came back to life. Right. What's the closest case to a zombie that's ever happened? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> There must have been someone. No, no not, not Jesus no. Christ. He was resurrected. That's there must have been that, someone. that partial decapitation you talked about. Uh, I mean, I guess the close you ever say, like, what, you're basically asking what's the longest anything's ever been because dead. Because if you die revived. and get resuscitated, yeah. and say you were dead for five minutes and you come back, you're not undead. No, you're, you're alive. alive. You're, you're alive again. You're real. Re the point alive. is, a zombie is a fictional thing. It's clearly a fictional Based thing. Based on a human body, which is a real thing. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so it's just like Star Wars. You know, it's fiction, which is based on space, which is a real thing. <laughs> it's just like unicorns. I mean, they're it just based makes on real sense. horses. How do you know if you're upside down? <laughs> yeah, what if, what if the Star Destroyer was upside down at the beginning of Star Wars? <laughs> what would you do? Like, I mean, it's holding on. <laughs> Darth Vader's like, this is, this is not right. <laughs> My eyes are closed. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite books are the ones that aren't based on <laughs> real things in any way. <laughs> they don't even have letters in them. It's just the vibration. <laughs> when you pick it up, that's They're just it. thoughts. They're just feelings. <laughs> well, it's okay. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, Back to the, the two-person thing. Okay. Is that, like, how many fingers are on Earth, for a start? Fingers are on what? Seven Earth. billion times ten? Yeah. yeah, seven billion times, well, ten-ish. Yeah, sure, on average. <laughs> According to Google. Ish. Right. So chances are that... Two of those fingers would have the same fingerprint. Well, yeah, I mean, I get m probably way more, yeah. Well, like the fact that, I mean, the snowflake thing is just a bunch of shit. There's no <laughs> snowflakes the same. It's, it's not true. It's the, I mean, it's like, it's, but there's so many of these things. Yes, there's something going to be exactly the same. Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes you look so confused. Shut down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So it's, it's possible. Oh, someone pointed out those uh, ants with the brain controlling fungus, or oh, they yeah? get those parasites. The cordyceps fungus. I don't know. Is that Which, what it's called? Which, by the way, Someone told me uh, has now infected something else. It's uh -oh. like crossed over to another species. No, there's, there's one for every species. Oh, is there? Yeah. What's the okay. human one again? I forget. AIDS. <laughs> it's fast. Wah, wah. So wait a second. Zombie, <laughs> ant. Like there's a fungus, and then there's also the one that the oatmeal did the comic about, where it's got like the parasitic larva in its brain that controls it and makes it act like a real ant, then makes the ant try to get eaten by a cow so it can start over. Oh uh, no, crow! Like it goes up a blade of grass. <laughs> right. Goes through birds, right? I thought it was cows. Okay. But yeah, whatever. Is, same I mean, you can argue that mad cow, whatever that is, that is also like that kind of like. Is that a parasite? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a it's a I think it's a, like, a, I don't even think it's a fungus. I think mad cow is like a, a crooked protein is what it is. Yeah, it's like a, a defect in spinal fluid, I believe. Is that yeah, what it is? A, yeah. There's a parasite in some <coughs> water insect that it just affects the part of the brain that controls its fear for the bird that eats it. And it just makes it not afraid. Huh. Is no, that it, why you hit birds every now and then in your car? It's like they don't—they don't fly. A bird, you know, just when you say that, because a bird hit my car the other day. Like I was in my driveway, just sitting there, and a bird went boom and hit it. And I was at the gym the other day. Apparently, birds are really dusty. 
I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, when they, they hit the window and they leave the print. About, they they leave a bird. perfect bird print when they hit the window. <laughs> yeah. Bam! They're going through the air. Think about how much like dust they're picking up just by flying. They're just the radiation. Pollution. Yeah, just distribution <laughs> methods. <laughs> it's too, like, if leave. a nuclear bomb hits, stay away from birds. <laughs> That's right. There you go. The little one hit you. But uh, I, we were at the gym and uh, <clears throat> heard a thump, and I saw a perfect like pigeon-sized imprint on the window, like this dust print. And then we saw something other, something else big go by. And one of the guys who had watched the whole thing go down, there was like a bird of prey chasing this pigeon, and the pigeon, fucking bad luck pigeon, bam, right in the window, fell down, and the hawk was like, okay. <laughs> and then got him and Easy carried one. him off. Like the pigeon knocked itself out, and then the hawk just carried it away and ate it. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, if you think about it, think about it. It's probably way better off, because the pigeon had no fucking clue what happened. Probably knocked Is there itself anything more straight. shocking than walking into a window that you can't see? Like, is there anything that makes you recall with such... Does that happen to you frequently? No, I mean, I've never done it. But I see it a lot on the internet. Uh, yeah, people and like, are shocked those videos hell. are funny. There's also weird videos of people... it's always the same. Like, people run with their head. <laughs> no, like, people <laughs> run with, like, the head is the front thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So you never, they never kick it. It's always, like, face first. Well, that's how you move, right? Like, you throw your body weight forward. Yeah. So you, you topple yourself and just your legs move out to catch up. The, uh, the, the other ones, too, that I've seen videos of, like, people who just don't seem to understand what a revolving door or an automatic door are. They just... Have never seen it before. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen the guy like runs through the yeah. the yeah. automatic door? Like he like, stands like back and he waits for the slide and then he just runs. <laughs> he just <laughs> runs full speed. There's this video of the glass. there's four glass doors like this and two of them open up yeah. on top of the other glass doors yeah. and there's this lady who comes as they're opening and she stops and then moves over to the side of one of the windows and as it's closing she tries to walk through it thinking <coughs> that the two little glass panels and she just goes dong and like falls right back. Genius. It's even worse when the fucking shatters the glass too, and they're like laying there and like yeah, that's the best. The glass. That's even better. <laughs> What's more embarrassing, having someone see you walk into glass and be fine, and then leave, or shattering it? Be fine. Because then you're hurt. And so Probably shattering is more embarrassing because then like you'd feel obligated to stand around and be like, yeah, I'm responsible. It, it was an <laughs> yeah, accident. I had to wait I, for the whole clean it up. Yeah, I didn't mean to do this. Dude, I watched a guy walk into a <clears throat> pole. Uh, well, I was out getting some lunch somewhere, and there was a bunch of us on the street. And the guy was walking. No, no, I take it back. I was in Vegas. And uh, there was a guy checking his Twitter or whatever. And there was like oh. a little like pole that was up right about crotch level. And he walked right into it. And it was uh, Joel and I were watching. I was like, oh, this is going to be crazy. Oh, you assholes. And it's like, yep, totally. By the way, yeah. I just want to clear this up. Gavin, you're totally wrong. You help the girl if she falls down. Yeah. Wait, what? Always help the girl. What, what, it was what? after our Oscar discussion. Yes. Gavin said he would have let Jennifer Lawrence lay there. Oh, you're a you fucking okay? idiot. Because he, he's an asshole. He, he doesn't want to embarrass her. He draw more okay. attention to it. Jesus This Christ. actually, after we had this discussion, something happened. Like, I was in the kitchen. <laughs> and it was Chris and Brandon <laughs> and Matt, our CEO, we, we Matt have, who plays Sarge. We have footage of it. Yeah, I know oh, we do. We, no, on, we have it queued up and ready. Right, what? I know. So, oh, I'm no. it up. so Holly, oh, no. Holly, the the female in this clip is Holly. She's our new PHP developer, and we're all we're all in the kitchen, and she's oh walking. My oh, right. this oh, this is beautiful. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Security footage. Oh my god, this is amazing. So here comes Holly right. walking through the door, walking happy as can door. be, and she goes, "I'm walking away," and then she goes, oh, "Wham!" Gosh. and she eats it. And everyone, no! Brandon, Brandon, wow. doesn't even move. Brandon and Chris don't even uncross their arms. I didn't, wow. I didn't even know that Matt made that big a move yeah, to help Matt her. Matt reached. So Brandon, let me explain Brandon what we just saw. has zero reaction. I mean, wow. So Holly walked in the door. She walked like from the kitchen to the <laughs> hallway transition, and she slipped and fell. But she did the Brandon, exact thing. Brandon I, says his reaction was laughing. Oh, that's you can't better. see it. Thank you, Brandon. That's you awesome. That wow. But Holly did the exact thing that I was expecting him to do. Just like immediately get up and keep going. Just be like. Ah, uh, well, I fell. Yeah, yeah, but I'm what if, like, going. in the Oscars case... if everyone case, swarmed and went, oh, my God, I'd be like, all right, But I what fell. if in the Oscars case, she's wearing a giant gown, and you don't know if she can actually get back up? Yeah, I'd probably do that. We, we got a replay here. Okay. <laughs> 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 and then Bernie... It looks like Bernie... I like that you were looking at it. It's like you put a banana skin yeah. on it. <laughs> <laughs> did you see her from behind you? What, you shoot her a look that made her fall down? What did you slip on, Holly? It was raining outside oh, it was and it wet. was wet. And she oh. was wearing. Can we get Holly on the camera? Do we have that yeah, set up? Yeah, yeah. Holly, you want to jump on the? Uh, would, you, would you like the, to the make, make your hot seat over there? Let us know how you felt as uh, someone who was helpless and fell over. Yeah, it'll take uh, it'll take a few seconds to. Uh, yeah, get the but I gotta up. say too is like they're they're cutting the clip off here. Uh, this is this is uh, security uh, camera footage, by the way. We'll put it in the link dump. But Brandon and Chris. And I'm over by the by now the sink, and I go, how come nobody helped her get up? <laughs> come on, guys. And Brandon goes, Brandon, still without uncrossing his arms, he, he looks at me, and then he looks up at the security camera, and he goes, 
hey, you think we got a clear shot of that? <laughs> like he immediately, his mind immediately went to not only don't help her. Oh, Holly's, but, Holly's wearing a green shirt in front of a green screen. This, this oh. could be but, very uh, interesting. Then it, goes, then it goes to him like, I can collect footage of this and use it. What are it. the chances? And of course then we showed it. So <laughs> no, we, we can't. All right, now, now we're getting way out of control here. Holly also tripped today on her blanket in the office. I told, <laughs> I told her I wouldn't tell anybody, but I just told everyone. You just told nice. everyone. Sorry. This is the opposite of telling nobody. Is like telling someone what, on the podcast. What is, like, okay. So Barbara has like this giant blanket she has in the office, and she's like, "Oh, I'm, I'm from Canada. Dude, I'm used to being." Cold. Anybody, then, any like, of the new people could back me up on this. Emily, the new store manager, came in, and she's like, "Man, it's cold in here. How do well, you guys thing, work in but here?" But then the thing is, you guys turn up the AC, and we are burning. Like we are super right. hot over the AC. Oh, there oh, there she is. is. She's, oh, she's uh, got a floating collar. That's pretty cool looking. Uh, <laughs> so Holly, do you wish someone had been more on the ball and helped you get up? <laughs> you weren't just like, man, there's three dudes all around me and no one's helping me right now. I, yeah, I was just laughing. I thought it was funny and I fall a lot. So <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't immediately think like, oh. man, that Brandon is a dick. Well, there's a, her, we have a problem with her mic audio. So oh. sorry, Holly. You'll have to defend yourself some other oh, time. Maybe, maybe it's actually Brandon. Yeah, sure. We have a problem with the audio. She's, Suddenly, As a quick recap, she said she just got up and left and immediately went back to her yeah. office. She, she didn't yeah. seem to have too much of a problem with it. She also claims she falls a lot, too. So. <laughs> she did. Yeah. Good. That's on record, by the way. The, the mic did work. She falls a lot. Yeah. So, so. If any bruises start popping up, we know it's, you know, <laughs> falls a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we do. It seems like we have been running low on liquor lately. Yeah. Like really. Someone's been drinking it. Yeah, that's true. We have more employees now, so. That is true. Okay, so other notes. What are we going to talk about th this week? Gus, anything else happened? Um, I, I think we covered all... I worried about North Korea. Dude, they've cut communications before. Never like this. No, they have. This Never has like ha this. How? How is... What's different about this they, time? They, they, tell they, me, they, apparently... No, wait, wait, wait. Jack is a North Korea analyst, apparently. No, I'm fucking, Please I'm tell me, what is terrified. different? What is different is what I'm fucking asking you. They're, 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 they broke the contract they I, had with South Korea. The armistice. It's happened. It's, happened. Armistice. it's happened before. Never has it happened. 60 years they've had it. Hasn't it happened four times in the last decade they've done that? Yes. I don't think so. And they cut the phone line 10 years ago in 2003. Now nah, we'll fuck that then. It has happened. All right. Here, here is an all argument that right, could fine. be made. Here's an argument that could be made, Gus, is that Kim Jong-il was a fucking lunatic <clears throat> and was always like rattling his saber and all that stuff. But he never did anything. This is the first time they've done it under a new leader who might actually go through with something. My thought, my rationale, and the reason I'm not worried is this. The people who are in power in North Korea will continue to remain in power if they maintain the status quo. If they launch a nuke and start killing people, they will lose everything they this have. This was the argument with Saddam as well. Okay, but what right? happened? Right. Yeah. It's like, Saddam's not, not going to do anything because he's in power in his country. He's fine. Right. Okay. They, they are happy. They are suppressing the people. <clears throat> What's going on there is atrocious and horrible and something should be done about it, but they will not instigate any conflict because they want to maintain their power. But what happens if they are, they are still in power? Yes, but their country is on the verge of collapsing. And so they're seeing, they're, they're watching. That's like, definitely not different from the last 10 years. But I mean, like, I mean, there's like, like they're saying like, like millions have died due to like starvation. And That's stuff. been going on. That's exactly what's been happening. But it's kind of one of those things like at some point you're going to hit a threshold and be like, well, this country's fucked. Let's just burn everything we can. So what? But burn, they burn still, the field the, and get the, the rich out. still have power and still have but money. They're not, they're not starving. All right. What yeah. is making you so minged off about this? Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just. Nervous. What do you think is going to happen? Like, tell us, make a prediction here. So that what are you worried about? Sure. Like, what do you think will happen in the next I, I, th I think. <laughs> I think it's going to be something where, like, someone fires a shot, you know, and, like, it just gets taken in the wrong way, and then suddenly something, a little skirmish pops up, and we've never, I mean, we've never seen, I don't know, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what could happen with North Korea, but I, I could see them trying to launch something I, big. I, I, I watch, I love, I, I, and the reason I'm so passionate about this is yeah. I, I love North Korea, and I love... The, like the story of what's happening between North and South Korea. I watch a lot of documentaries and a lot of news coverage and analysis about, about this. Before, yeah. Yes. We talked about StarCraft. And I love StarCraft. I'm super excited about that. You know, they're at the DMZ where they have the phones to make the connection and, and meet. There's like, a, there's like a building that straddles the DMZ where they can meet. Um, like North Korean guards face South Korean guards. And the South Korean guards all wear, you know, Military uniforms, they have giant aviator sunglasses, and the guards at South Korea stations there at the DMZ are like the tallest soldier, soldiers in their military. Oh, yeah. So they get like the tallest soldiers they have and put them there to intimidate the North Korean soldiers <laughs> and think, what's going on in the South that their soldiers are so much taller than us? <laughs> it's it's like a, a subtle like mind game they play. I saw a photo on Reddit of uh, like the South Korean soldiers at the DMZ where they were opening a door, which is essentially the door to North Korea. Like once they cross yeah. that threshold, they're in North Korea. 
and they had a guy literally holding on to a, like a pole or something oh, yeah. and holding hands with the guy who was opening the door in case he was to be grabbed and pulled in. Yeah. Like, that's I nuts. Was They're like, they have crazy that. protocols. Like, think about that. That protocol has been established oh, yeah. for some reason. Like, yeah. they, they're like, we're going to open the door. Okay, I, I'm on pole. I, I, got, I got your arm. Yeah. You don't let go. So if you get sucked in, then there's literally nothing you can do about it. No, I mean, they'll take you they to fucking you. prison camp. It's like yeah. that crab in that water thing. <laughs> yeah, that's <true. laughs> exactly what it's like. Just gets sucked right I through. I once read, Gus, that there was a house that North Korea built on the edge of a cliff so that South Korea could see it. And it was like the vision of North Korea that they wanted South Korea to see. It was like a fake house where nobody was living, but they wanted it to look nice so that... That's a serious looking... Sounds about right. So that's serious like looking dude. The, oh, the wow. tall soldiers of South Korea... Look at those, those aviators. Yeah, yeah. Those, those look at his pants. Badass. Can we Photoshop the picture of Bernie's face up in that one? Just like Mr. <laughs> Shaq. Yeah, it was Shaq. God. Hey, but anyway, anyway, it's a situation. Yeah, you might. I mean, you're probably right. There's probably nothing, but it's still a situation that should be paid attention to, right? Yeah, I mean, it's important. It's you know, it's it's important in the grand political sense. I think sure. Okay. But it's not like it's not the end of the world. They're not going to attack. We are not right. in. Someone I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Jack's analysis of North Korean politics. It is, someone does something, then something happens, and then I don't know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Basically Brilliant. that. Well, I was like, it's, it's sad, but... Let me, give you, let me give you a great, horrible, worst-case scenario. Okay. Like, like uh, North Korea decides to launch a nuke at South Korea. Okay. It's a shitball little nothing nuke, you know what I mean? But it still isn't, like, essentially an ICBM. It, it hurts Seoul, something like that. <clears throat> I'm not worried about that. Okay. No offense. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, wow. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. South, South Korean listeners. So that they launch an ICBM class missile and then it detonates in a nuclear explosion. I'm not so much worried about like how much devastation that does. I'm worried about these fucking rusted ass decommissioned computers that are running silos in former USSR countries. That detect they go, the launch. Oh, there's a fucking launch. And it's yeah. in our hemisphere. Well, and then yeah. they launch that. Shit. I'm a lot yeah. more worried about. That, that. I'm worried about. Because that's I'm, like because yeah. we know how a computer shit can go wrong. Yeah. yeah. It's know? like, I mean, I mean, personally, so even if North Korea, I mean, God, I can't believe we're talking about this so much. <laughs> even if North Korea, like, let's say, launches a nuke, there are, I would assume, anti-missile batteries in the South. So you ideally intercept it in the air. You still have a nuclear explosion, but it's not hopefully over yeah. a major urban By the center. way, that's really fucking hard, yeah. what you just said. Yeah, I mean, we have a rocket system. with a rocket. <laughs> well, yeah, we have systems where we say they do that. And, you know, I mean, I mean that's what essentially one of the things they say that bankrupted the USSR is when Reagan put out all that Star Wars yeah. stuff that was total bullshit. That was total like hypothetical propaganda stuff that we could shoot down ICBMs, and then essentially that was one of the things that led to the end of the Cold War. Because like, they nah. seriously started investigating it. Right, yeah. And so then, wait, you won the war with bullshit. The, the U.S. won the war by making the Soviet Union spend more money than it had. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yep. And just but, I mean, like, um, that being said, like, I'm not concerned about North America being hit. Like, I don't think there's any chance that North Korea no. could hit North America. Even if they could get a rocket anywhere near us, we would take it out before it got to us. I would imagine. I'd like to think that our military and our, you know, we have something Someone smarter that, than us exactly. is working on it. Yeah, that, you know, there some, exists yep. something that... You know, I, 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 we just get political here, too, but we can't also gloss over the fact that, you know, the U.S. did that in Star Wars. One of the many things that happened to the USSR, another major thing that happened to them was Afghanistan. They got in a fucking sinkhole in Afghanistan for okay. 10 goddamn years and fought in Afghanistan and lost a ton of money and goodwill and everything fighting that war, and they eventually just pulled out and said, fuck, you know, we're not, we're not doing this, and left. And it's one of the things that bankrupt, which is amazing to me because then we watched the U.S. do the exact same fucking mm -hmm. thing less than 20 years later. You know how you have that emergency system here where, like, TV, you can just replace the Emergency TV broadcast with, system. Which, yeah. by the way, have we talked about this before? They test that thing every goddamn week. Right. Every week. It's never been used. If they didn't use the emergency broadcast system on 9-11, when the fuck are they going to use it? <laughs> what has to happen? Zombies. Does the Earth have to split in half? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody has to get a real-life zombie <laughs> going. A fucking, it would take an astronaut thinking he was upside down. So is that, that what they, off. is that what they use? If they were to evacuate a city, they would just do that? I, I really, at I this point, it. I have no idea the what that system day, does because they didn't use it on what we consider to be our biggest national Don't they use it on tornadoes? Like when tornadoes are like coming through a city, they can they can light it up like that. The the emergency broadcast. Have you yeah. ever seen something get taken over by the emergency broadcast system? No, me I see, personally, like, no. News things interrupt. Shows. But I've seen the tests. Yeah. The emergency broadcast see, system. I, they'll just hope everyone has the South by Southwest app installed, and they'll <laughs> yeah, exactly. them like, oh, nukes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're, you're in line for Prince, and you're like, oh shit, guys. I'll fucking I don't know out. if we have anything. Yeah. Shit, shit, the missiles are coming. Or whatever it is. I don't know if we have anything like that in the UK. Like I never saw anything like that when I was there. 
But, and uh, we don't, definitely didn't have this. Where the other day in the office, Michael, Michael's phone made the weirdest noise ever, and he he pulled his phone out of his pocket like, what the hell was that? And it was like an Amber Alert because a kid went missing or something. Oh my god! I didn't know they could do that. They shouldn't be able. I think it's I think it's an opt-in thing. He just got his phone recently. It made so it was it must, like it must have been something you just like, it like checked a, off. Like by the it. previous maybe the previous phone number owner. Uh, had opted into it or something? I don't know. Well, he signed a brand new contract, so I'm thinking maybe but it's just like a default. I'm thing. sure the phone number's been reused, though. I yeah. guess so, yeah. But a guy called Mario had my phone number before me. Mario. Prick. <laughs> so we're getting a new area code in Austin this year. Yeah, it's 71 oh, something. 737. 737. Like the airplane. 37. Oh, nice. Anyway, my point with that, though, is pizza, pizza. If, that's, if that system is only on TV and phones, with people watching TV <laughs> less, can they. Can internet providers do that to your computer if they wanted to? I well, actually, not. They, they, well, they have to revise it all the time because they realized about 10 years ago that DVRs were killing, nobody's watching TV live anymore. So it doesn't make sense to have an emergency broadcast interrupt a recording that you watch, you know, an hour or two later. No, I mean, my, that, that's one of my personal pet peeves. So they had peeves. to adapt it so it punches through when you're watching yeah. a recording. They can punch through a lot. One of my yeah, personal pet peeves is when I watch them, it's been DVR'd, and there's those fucking crawling weather alerts at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, yeah. Like, severe weather, like, this doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> this was days ago. I don't have to see this again. Yeah. Well, it's fucking bullshit. Well, how are they going to separate that if it was actually live? I don't know. That's th someone smarter should be working on that. <laughs> you know, believe it or not, believe it or not, uh, we come from back from telecom. Emergency services are actually one of the things that can kind of slow down progress of technology. For example, uh, IP telephony, which is, you know, telephone calls based on IP addresses and data packets and stuff like that, that was slowed down for a long time because of 911 address delivery. Because when you would call 911, if you're on an IP phone, the address would be like co-location server where the service is. So, like, the, the trucks would roll up to, you know... A data center somewhere. A data center somewhere, yeah. yeah. Hmm. When someone calls and says they have a heart attack. And that's, that's a really big deal. And what's that called? Uh, E911. E911, but what's it? SS7, I want to say, was like the oh, layer yeah, of that's, the... That's like the level of redundancy you have to have. So like a data center has to be uh, certified SS7. Yeah. But I, remember, I can't remember what the layer was in telecom. It was only a whole generation so of So do they just come ago. to the location of your phone if it's a mobile phone? Uh, the mobile phones actually don't know how it works, honestly. With I wonder if so. we stood on top of a skyscraper... Got three phones, dialed 999, I almost said 999, 911, and then just like lob the phones into different parts and see if police went to those locations on the, on the you ground. You don't think the phone would break when it hit the ground? <laughs> now before they <laughs> transmit the data, he's probably right. They can trace that, can't they? Mm -hmm. The battery's still in. You ever thought about that? Like if your plane goes down, would you have enough time to make a call? Like when you get down to With the With an iPhone? Hell no. I think it takes five <laughs> minutes to turn on. It does. <laughs> well, I leave my phone on. So you, just know <laughs> you know I do. the worst part of an iPhone is? When it actually dies and then you plug it in to charge, it doesn't come back on for a good five to ten minutes. That's a big that is the worst. You should be able to use Clearly. something when it is plugged, plugged in. into the wall. I totally agree with Barb. I, I totally agree with you. What it is be, that? It would be faster. It's probably so it doesn't do die while it's booting. Yeah. So you're yeah. not like unplugging it immediately. There's no way to protect you from that. Like, yeah. oh, plug your fucking computer in because we're updating. It's what like, would yeah, you be more annoyed at, though, if you lost power while that was happening and then your phone was bricked? Not bricked. I mean, you could probably restore it. You, you know? could restore it. Yeah, I could restore it. No, I've actually. Know. <laughs> hey, by the way, I never turn off my phone when we travel, right? I forgot. I can't believe I didn't tell you guys this. I never turn off phone when I travel. I just like. I and I still I don't understand why. I just click it like into the sleep or whatever you know, like or lock. Just you mean off instead of you lock the screen? I lock the screen. Yeah, I lock the screen. And I throw it in the back of the seat back pocket. So then when I land, I just pull it out and it's picked up the network and I'm good to go. And you guys are like, want to turn on, wait, Apple logo, da da. Yeah, no. because I'm not in the biggest <laughs> rush when I'm sat on a plane and I can't go anywhere. And even if my phone was on or off, I wouldn't be able to do anything different. You will love this then. You will love this then. Because I was flying along between Los Angeles and Austin. <laughs> I was flying along, but things sit in the pocket. All of a sudden, my phone, the email alert goes off that I got like email like two and a half hours into the flight. I'm mm. like, how the fuck did that happen? So I pull my phone out. And it had picked up a network, and it had downloaded all my email, including oh, attachments no. and stuff like that. They got it for the thing. It had picked up a network uh, carrier in Mexico. Oh. <laughs> like, and I guess their broadcast standards are not what ours are. They can do like a heavier like broadcast network yeah. there. Or, like really high broadcast. Yeah, and it picked it up at 35,000 feet. I picked up a Mexican. So I got data roaming <laughs> charges. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that, when awesome. cell phones first rolled out and I grew That's up on the karma. border, that was a huge problem. That was karma. Like you'd be in the U.S., using your phone, but you'd be like, oh shit, I'm on the Mexican tower. Why did you just turn off data roaming? That didn't exist back yeah. then, dude. It was Wait, like, when was this? This was like in 95, uh, 96. Wait, so you Why didn't you go into airplane mode? No, because no, he's an asshole. Wow. 
Listen, if I go and <laughs> listen, fuck you both. Fuck all of you. He's too important, everyone. Clearly. Look at the tie. It, it's like that thing that Steve Jobs did. Look at that shirt and tie. Come on. L l listen, listen to me, jackasses. How many fucking planes are you on today where they have a fucking Wi Fi network on the plane? Which, on the plane. Which doesn't work during takeoff and landing. It's, but it works during the flying part. So, but that works with air, air, does it work with airplane mode on? That. No, no Wi Fi doesn't work on airplane on. mode. Yeah. So, you, there's no setting on your phone to have it off and be able to use Wi Fi. You enable you airplane mode and then you turn Wi Fi on. Yeah. You enable airplane mode and turn Wi Fi. You can't do that. Yes, yeah. you absolutely can. That's what I just asked. Yeah, that's exactly what I do yeah. every fucking time. No. So, I turn, I turn, I turn airplane you, mode on no. yeah. and then I turn no Wi Fi TV. on. Yeah. Well, they didn't put that in any manual. It's all bullshit. All right, we're going to wrap up soon because so we have So I have a plane with a Wi-Fi so signal you. next to it. We should talk about So watch this. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to PAX East, not this, coming, not this week, but next week? Next week. weekend. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. So who's going to be there? Uh, Jack, Barbara, Bernie, me, Monty, Miles, Miles Carey. Carey. It always, it's always like, oh, Alan. we're going to send, send like two or three people this time, and it ends up being 15. Or yeah. Well, so you want to be the only one there, do you? Huh? No, no, I'm just saying, I'm saying it's, always, it's always a small group, and then it always expands and expands and expands. What's so we have our panel uh, Friday. Yes. Jack, didn't you spend two years of your life bitching about how you weren't added on to Australia all the time? So how can you no, be no. upset about not being added on to one convention, and then you're uh, still upset about being no, added I'm, on I'm, to I'm not, no, I'm not upset. I'm saying it, it's always we expand. He sounds, he sounds upset. He's Wait, the guy you know, you know what really expands? Every fucking year we say we're going to go to less conventions. That's what expands. And then we end up going to all the fucking conventions. We're like, we were at the mean. South by Southwest Gaming Convention Yeah, I don't know how that year. happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have a fucking convention in Austin. Yeah. It's our convention. And we're here in, in May or March. Oh, we love South by. We love those guys. So it's kind of, it's like that scratching backs type deal. Like, we, we're going to help them out. They're going to help I'm us sure out. They, I'm sure they're going to fucking just flood in our convention in July. I'm sure that's exactly what's going to happen. Gus, so, is that going to happen? No. Okay, I don't think so. <laughs> so you know how when people think that rules don't apply to them? Like you? Like the Bernie syndrome? Yeah. Well... No, well, no, but like Steve, I think the rules are stupid. I think it's a different. But they don't apply to him. Right. So go on. Clearly. Steve Jobs apparently, when uh, he he had a Mercedes, and there's some law in California where you don't actually have to have plates on them for a certain period, like three months or six months or something. So he would just leave the plates off, and then every six months would replace the car with an identical one, <laughs> just to reset that counter, because he's like. I'm Steve Jobs. I don't need plates. Yeah, I remember people once took pictures of his car with no license plate because then there's just like a barcode there. And they yeah. were like, he has some kind of special license plate that's just a barcode. It's like, no, every Mercedes that he bought has a barcode there. It's like a, the serial number for right. the car. You just never see it because normally the license plate's in front of it. Yeah. Hmm. So that's what that is. What? That I'm Steve Jobs? No, yes. you're just like, <laughs> you. this, I'm going to pick this rule and not do that one. But who does that? He's buying a new Mercedes, though, every six months. But that's, don't you think that's mental? Thing, right? he, he could spend, what, 75 bucks a year to register that car and get a license plate, or he could spend, what, 50, 60, 70 grand on a new Mercedes every six months? It's all marketing. <laughs> it's all marketing. We're talking about it, fucking Mercedes. It is. So I guess so. It is. We all own iPhones. Let's go buy some Teslas. But we're going to get Tesla the podcast. So, yes, our panel at PAX East. Yes. Uh, it's at the main <laughs> theater on Friday. It's, it's either 1 p.m. or it's 2 p.m. It's 1 p.m. in the main theater after Jerry and Mike open up for us. They're going to warm <laughs> the crowd up. They're going to do some, nice some jokes and some magic, and then they'll be ready They're for gonna us. They're going to hug their fans. And we already announced that we will be showing the black trailer at PAX East. Yes, the black trailer from Ruby will be That's shown the there. third trailer. As well as some other uh, stuff that we're working on. Yes. Bernie just took a picture of me. <laughs> just because it annoys you. We're doing it in flight. I wanted to take a picture of Gus. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we got that coming up. And uh, we are booth 711. Are we really? It's mm -hmm. a good nice. number. We're 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 back we're, to we're back close to the escalators. Right? Like yeah. when you come down the escalators, I think we're behind this. Yeah, yeah you like, like take a you... left or a right. It's like right in between the two escalators. I believe All it's right. a left. But it, if you come down the other one, it's a right. Well, it's from the other side of it. What if you're They're right next to each other. What what we're between them. Down? <laughs> we're between the escalators. Yes. Oh, I thought we were all the way on. Have the Have you left been to Pax East before? I know you fucking have. I have. There will be a map, and you will not have to figure this out based on our directions from memory. Someone just tweeted: Steve Jobs did that to his car so he wouldn't be followed. Yeah. Surely that sticks out more than a car. Well, I think he didn't want his license plate looked up so people wouldn't find his address. That happens. Uh, yeah. He yeah. knew his address. He already knew his address. Yeah, but it's easier to find. I don't know. Yeah. He's got reasons. But, you know, you didn't invent the iPhone. What the fuck do you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do whatever you want. You don't have a car. You're yeah. a human being you without a car in America. <laughs> yeah, I don't have plates either. In Texas. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't. I mean, what is it? How long have you been here now? What is the chance you're ever going to get a goddamn car? Barb had a car in like three days. You had a new car, right? Sure, yeah. you had a license. What? Then get a fucking license. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. I, 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 I went and signed him up 
for driving school. And I took him to the place, signed him up for driving school. Oh, what, eight months ago? And I said, you're going on Saturday to start. He's like, okay, nah. But then it. a hot girl came to town. And if I was doing that, I wouldn't be able to hang out. Yeah, that's true. If I was doing that. But then the next weekend. Yeah, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> the thing forgot. is, I'm actually pretty convinced that if I yeah. did get a license when I could have, like eight years ago or whatever, I think I'd be dead. No, get, I don't trust myself really. You're also you're also a big ninny when it comes to driving. You're very scared of it. How am I scared of it? You are scared of driving. You're like you know, you're con you're convinced. I'm like, scared of driving. You are. Oh, you think other people in the car are gonna kill you? Like when they bounce around the Dude, cabin. Dude, people here are mental. They they're drunk all the time. That's what being scared means, Gavin. That's what it fucking means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are scared of driving. You think you're gonna die while driving. You did too many uh, crash them up videos for your. Slow-mo shit. That's what it is. It is. I've just seen how slowly you can crash a car and be dead. Yep. And it's, it's freaky. I'd rather be, I'd rather someone else be responsible than me. There we, there we go. That's a, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's scumbag Bernie right there. Where did that come from? With your tie and Twitter glasses somewhere. and someone shirt. On Twitter. Yeah, it's my hipster <laughs> outfit. All right, we, need to, we, we, we need to, uh, to wrap up here. Anything, there, anything to see at South By? What's that? Anything to see at South By? I'm sure there is. There's a know. huge rumor floating around right now. I almost don't want to talk about it. I bet you're talking about it. It's not real. Uh, it's Barbara and I are both in agreement on this one. That's I'm real. It's not real. I'm very excited today because uh, it got announced that Matt and Kim are playing Austin. I'm very excited. Well, is that the secret? I, oh, we didn't, even, no. we didn't even get to tell the guests you're so, interviewing on Thursday. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can talk about it. I'll so. tell it. I don't care. Um, so on Thursday, Jack's going <laughs> on What's Bernie. Trending, and it's going to be uh, the guests are going to be uh, Matt and Kim. Matt who, and Kim. He's very big fans of Huge Matt and fan Kim. Of Matt and Kim. Holy and then the, the rumor, which is we think is going to be, is that Chuck D. He's going to interview Chuck D on What's Trending. No, it's the other way. Well, whatever. Anyway, yeah. So Chuck D's going to interview you? No, no, no. I'm not interviewing. I'm not interviewing anyone. <laughs> like, no, those, those are the guests on the show. What was the other way around? What no, no. That, that's not the big rumor we were talking about. That's a different thing. No, I'm just saying for What's Trending. You're that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Don't look back on me. What, what was the, the big rumor? rumor? What was the rumor? Yeah, what's the rumor you're okay. talking about? Well, what's everyone on about? I'll, I'll say the rumor. All right, fine. Barbara, no, will say the rumor. two totally different things. Tell your rumor There now. is a rumor that Daft Punk will be performing at the Capitol on Wednesday. With yeah. Chuck. Absolute and bullshit. It'll be their first bullshit. performance since 2007. So. Uh, and apparently they're going to have a new album. So that's a rumor. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just two blokes, though, isn't it? it? But it's Daft Punk. It's, like it's just going to be two different I love blokes. Daft Punk. If Daft Punk is playing Austin, I'm going to go and wait in line for seven hours to go see. Do you go like, to live music at all? Do you go, like, if they... Hey, I, I, saw, I saw Girl Talk. I've been to live music once. And, and like, talk. If I, what's your favorite song right now that you... Like, anything at all? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so, like, Girl Talk. If Girl Talk's coming and they said, oh, there's only 100 seats and you could enter a contest to win, or would you do that at all? Yeah, I'd go. You'd go? Yeah. If you had a ticket, like, would you go? Would, I, would I make any effort to get a ticket? No. Yeah. If someone well, said, "Here's a ticket," Gavin like, doesn't make an effort for anything. Exactly. That's 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 the tough what thing. What is to ask the Gavin. hardest you have tried at anything <laughs> in the last? That now I shouldn't say that because you work very hard on the videos you make. You work exceptionally the, hard on the those. visa to work. It was the hardest thing I worked on ever. Yeah. It took like it took like a, a year and a half of like two, two years beating you over the head to turn in five pieces of paper. Yeah, you would not do that. No. Beating you over the head, like just oh, like, so I just needed to fill out a form and that was it. Five, dude, it was five so easy. Pieces of paper. <laughs> she did it in eight weeks. She yeah. was here. She was here. It was what? like I said, do you want to get a visa? She said yes. By the time I hung up the phone, she was in the front door. <laughs> like she was done. Knock, knock. Okay. Anyway, so I'm very excited. Thursday I'll be on uh, what's trending with Matt and Kim and Chuck D from Public yes. Enemy. So, so anyone, don't think you're supposed to talk about that yet. But fuck okay. you. Anyone that right. <laughs> brought it up first. Anyone that publicly wears a helmet or a mask, they do that so that they don't have to be under the mask, right? You mean, uh, oh, like Dead what? Mouse or Daft Punk? Yeah, they do it so that That's they could just get two guys to like replace them and then just play the same music. Or they could walk like, down the street and That was an old rumor scared. about Kiss in the 70s, right? That it was like several different regional well, was, bands. Hand me that. I saw something really funny. It was we got to wrap up it. soon. I know oh, I keep no, saying no, it. we got like five minutes here. They did, the, uh, fucking, they did it with the fucking. They did with a stick on Top Gear. It was like four different dudes. Oh, really? I thought the stick was one guy. Nah. Well, I know they replaced him. Like, he's been multiple people. Yeah, he's over time. He's been a few different dudes. I've seen him. Oh. Oh, that's right. You worked on Top Gear. Did you have to sign anything specifically referring to Stig? And nah, that didn't give a crap. You call him Mr. Stig? That didn't even give me earmuffs. Commander Stig? <laughs> All right. What are we looking at, Burns? What's the name of the wrestler that wears the white makeup? Sting? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's Sting. I know, I know exactly what you're talking what, about. What is it? WWE? WWF? What are we, what uh, are I think it was called? WWE. Yeah? I don't know WCW, according to Brandon. Oh, oh there thanks, go. Brandon. Whoa, what's that? Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to try to look at this video, guys, because I thought it was funny. It was, All right. Ah, uh, fuck, <laughs> where is it? Uh, uh, I swear, YouTube, YouTube on this is different to the rest of the world. <laughs> Nothing ever shows up on this computer. I just think you're missing. I can't even see. What's that? No, we're fine. You're sounding like Joel. <laughs> oh, what okay. the fuck is this video, dude? Yes, face paint, not a mask. Corner Brandon, he's very upset. 
Oh, well, no, but he's wearing a mask. You should just fuck. He's wearing a mask in the video. I, mean, I don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the best way to end the podcast. Stand, yeah, WCW, I, I'm so apathetic. Mask, I don't Gus, care. Gus, have you ever done South by Southwest? Like properly done South by Southwest? Like on a badge or a wristband? Yeah. You have? When was the last time you did South by? This year. You have? Well, I guess. Well, not not for work reasons. Like for fun. Like no, know. that's not fun. What? There's it, nothing fun about South by. Yeah, there nothing is. Fun about, fun about no. South by. Do you not like live music? No. Fucking hate live music. Yeah, okay, so, so the answer is no, you've never done That's South what by. I said. I said no. It was literally the no, first no, word you, out of my mouth. No, you said, you, you said you're doing it this year. <laughs> I know, and then you said for fun. Personally, I said no. There is nothing fun okay. about South by. All right. Aww. Well, you went to a party. <sighs> That's not, you don't need a base for that. That's not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, did you have a bad time at the party? Is that what you're trying to tell us? You didn't like being there? You don't have to go to our party next year. Fucking oh, Gus. This. Turn off your fucking phone. That's how Gus sits. Yeah, Gus way. is in relaxation. Fuck. Like, that's how that's, Gus works. That's, that's about 4.30 Gus right there. Like, yep. he slowly slips down Are we still chair. looking for this thing? <laughs> I'm going to fucking find it. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm really mad that I can't find this now. All right. I'm really mad. All right. All right. Fail at the internet. We'll put it in the link dump. We'll put it in the link dump. We'll All find right. it. It's, it's, a funny, it's a funny video. It's okay. Okay. Well, well, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Because I'm not going to watch that or see it. It would not be good. I'm not going to tell you because it wouldn't be easy. Yeah, now we've hyped it up. Great. Anyway, right. so Daft Punk, Matt and Kim, Bye. Austin, South by Southwest. Oh, and Barbara is going to be on What's Trending on Wednesday. Yes. But we don't know who she's going to be talking with, I who the not. guests are. Okay. But she'll be on it. You should watch it. And Gus will be appearing in South by Southwest at all the fun events. Uh, he'll be in the back so, of a pedicab. If, if, you're, if you're listening to Audio Versus Podcast, stay tuned for highlights from the Richard Garrett interview um, about his new project and about his history in the gaming industry. So, it's a great podcast. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Internet. Kisses.